Um, since it was your birthday, Rory, we we're recording on a Wednesday. I appreciate you we guys. Usually record on Thursdays, but now the Thursday is May the fourth. Be with you. Mm. It's your <laughs> birthday, more bare minimum. So we decided as a as a team to give you that day to yourself. Yeah, I felt I felt like I was and record on Wednesday. I should record on my birthday. I like working through the birthday. Why not? I think so. As men, we we need to work through our birthday. We well, get to avoid a bunch of unnecessary though. phone calls. Mm. We don't have to pay for shit. Mm. Or I could tell everyone in my life that we have to record so they leave me alone. They mm. think it's Wednesday that we're recording right now. Mm-hmm. But I could tell everyone that okay. now I'm recording tomorrow. Yeah. You should do that. No, Rory and Ma. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of the new Rory and Maul podcast. I am Maul. I'm Rory. And we're back, my brother. How you feeling? I feel fucking great. Listen, the Met Gala was this week uh, in New York. Traffic was gridlocked. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. I went nowhere near the Met. Oh, see, I, knew, I went nowhere near any, uh, anywhere, celebrity Halloween. Any, anywhere in the city, it was it was fucking crazy this weekend. Um, well, this week. Um, but I'm glad that shit is over. I hate when it's like events like that in New York because we have enough traffic as it is. True. I, I guess I didn't even notice. So like when the Met is here, it's, well, you don't you don't, you don't travel to the city around that time. So no, you, you're home in <laughs> yeah. in, in comfortable Jersey. Just yeah, yeah. snuggled. Up. And I stay far away from you. What's like the Met Gala in Jersey? Like what, what do y'all get in Jersey as considered like the Met? Uh, Newark. Got it. <laughs> a lot of costumes. Got it. Got it. A, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of different fashion yeah, senses. Yeah, a lot yeah. of costumes in Newark. Um, so yeah, the Met Gala happened. I wanted to call y'all and uh, pick a bone with y'all once again because y'all sat in here and told me that Little Nas X does not dress flamboyantly. Who said that? He dressed hip hop. That's hip hop today, right? Oh yeah, y'all, y'all laughed me. We said that. We never. I don't remember saying that. Little Nas X is not flamboyant. That's what y'all said. We never said. I said he didn't talk flamboyant. I agree. That's what I said. I said he doesn't talk flamboyant. What's flamboyant about this? Nigga had his ass out. He had a thong on. Nah, nah, nah. Kanye had like a mask. He had a thong on at the Met Gala. He was he was dipped in. I don't know if he was a Silver Surfer or the. Oh, I don't know what he was. If he was a parchment paper, he was Cisco's haircut. Reynolds rap. If he was a baked potato, I don't know what look he was going for. <laughs> mm. But uh, this Spirit. is what Little Nas X decided to wear. How'd you feel about the cuff? Um, Excuse me? I, yeah, I'm not even. I, I'm not even. <laughs> the cuff, his cufflinks. Oh, oh, I don't oh, even oh. know if he had cufflinks on. I, uh, he had <laughs> boots the cuff and a thong and, and pearls all over him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Met Gala, I don't know if that, you know, if everybody was happy. Some people did look great. Tiana Taylor looked amazing. I'm, I'm not the fashion person, so please, like, correct me. No, or don't, or don't correct me. You got some. I just feel like. fashion with you? Was this the first time people are just running out of dresses in tuxedos, right? But well, that's why this was the Nas first X year. had his ass out. He was didn't this, have a tuxedo or a dress to wear. Was this not Halloween this year? No, this Doja was, uh, was really a cat. Doja was a she cat. She was dressed well. The J theme, Cole could never. Well, she was be. Carl Lagerfeld's cat. cat. Yes, the she theme was, was Carl Lagerfeld. It was a tribute to Carl Lagerfeld. Got you. Gotcha. So, okay. so uh, which is weird. That uh, can we address that? You you think that's what that's what's weird about it, right? No, it's weird because he was like a big person that got caught up in the Me Too scandal. And he Damn. somehow came out unscathed. He so hates much women so. And black people. Babe, Thank baby, you. this is this is fashion. This we don't care no, about like, No, like it's it's great. Like good you for some great this art. Is, this is Chanel, baby. But they got so many of those fashion guys out of <laughs> they here. They don't care about that. And they're yeah. now. If, if you know the team. history of Chanel, you think yeah. they're gonna stop at that them guy? Chicks is, them chicks are still lined up to pay for those purses. They don't give a fuck about what Carl Lagerfeld said yeah. about them. And Jewish people will wear it. Yeah, are you kidding me? What are you talking about? No, I'm saying for that month or two when they cared about women. Nobody. Julie, I don't. I don't know. I'm saying when they cared about women. Hugo Boss was born. And then now now they're honoring him. But can we know by now, Julian? It's okay to say it. We know that. The cancel culture shit is not real. We know that Except when it comes people to get baby. upset. Except for the, the baby, yeah. Yeah, well, the, baby, his, the baby's ass is canceled. Uh, yeah. Anna didn't invite the baby? No. No. <laughs> no. no. She didn't invite the baby. Uh, but that cancel culture shit lasts for 10 seconds and, you know, it's 48 hours and everybody forgets well, about what's going on. Well, we've been podcasting for God knows how many years. Too I, many years. I've day. asked every single year what the fuck happens inside of that place. And I will never stop yeah, asking that question. I don't mind repeating oh, well, myself. What happens inside this Illuminati Halloween parade. It's a Tiana it's a party. They have they have a party. They dance. Uh there's Thank some performances. Man. Um there's food. There's drinks. Uh you know it's just it's just a party. Everybody gets dressed up in the theme and just, you know, strut their uh mm. their 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 net worths. It's Illuminati Junior Prom. <laughs> while they're, yeah, while they're right across the street from uh, a bunch of homeless people. Mm. Like gotta love New York City and the Met Gala. Yep. Represents so much. Oh, your favorite artist, Doja Cat. Yes. Actually showed up as a cat. <laughs> I mean, as she's Carl Lagerfeld's cat. Jermaine, uh, Jermaine could never. Yeah, no, Jermaine, Jermaine would never. I don't know. If, see, we got to say it's not about he could never. He would never. Jermaine would That's, never dress up as a cat. Well, he's not a cat, though. He's definitely not a cat. He's not J Cat. No. He's J. Cole. <laughs> Yuck. Big difference in that. J Cat. Uh, but I, I, I'm i not. I mean, listen, Doja, again, we speak about all the time. She's an artist. She's going to jump into this. Is not the first time she's, you know, 
jumped into like a whole theme and a and a whole character. This is what she does. Um her but makeup a, team a, killed that. Yeah, I'm about to say in a weird, kind of crazy way, she still looks great though. <laughs> Fam, what are you trying to say? <laughs> like the dress. Wait, you nice. was turned on by the cat no, shit? See, see, you what, you, what you mean she still look good? Tur- turned on is where you, you get weird. Would you make love to on. her in that? No, I would with not. That, I would. I said she, I said nah, she but like from behind. I, would. I see from behind. You, see how y'all turned it weird? I said I'd she missionary face to face. She looked good. The dress, meaning the dress, the outfit. That's what you mean. The fashion. Yeah, she looked good. You think she meowed all night? Probably not. No one does it. Probably. Probably. I'm if I'm if I'm willing to bet on it. She she meowed the Every entire night you. when somebody came up to her. She stayed in character the entire night. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm willing to bet. She was very much like who from Whoville. Who from yeah? Did you guys? Anna Wintour, Winter Christmas. I just hope Little Nas. X She's stealing put, the ball. I hope he didn't Grinch, put his cheeks mind. on a chair like that. I hope he put some pants on. Why? I hope they found him a good Sergio Tacchini, uh windbreaker suit. Something. Cover your ass yeah. up, man. Or just some champion sweats. Jared Leto. He he uh he he actually went as a full cat. A full cat. You don't cat. think that's weird? He ate because that looks just like Carl's cat. Um, he ate. <laughs> he, ate. He, ate. <laughs> he put on a cat suit. He didn't and, and walked around. No, he didn't. He can't eat. He would. Where would he eat at? Um. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, man, this is just uh, you got to have fun, right? This is, I guess, Hollywood and celebrities having fun. It's it's just it's a party. It's a theme. Let's just have fun. Be obnoxious. Be as That's fucking funny, crazy as we can for a night and have the entire Internet post nothing but pictures of us. So I want to see the 5013C tax returns for this event. Insane. Where does where does this charitable money go? Oh, you know, charity. who is? <laughs> You know it goes to charity. Where does any charitable money go? Is there, is there any malnourished kid that's like, thank you, Jared Leto, for dressing as a cat. I yeah. finally got a meal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Where does the charity. money go? I don't know, man. That's not my business. Private jet fuel. Well, oh, yeah. Got to gotta have the 50K the for jet that. fueled up. Got to do that. People um trust you guys' no, fashion don't. sense. No, they don't. Yes, uh, they do. Do they? Well, at least malls. <laughs> um, Shots. <laughs> Do who did you guys think was the best dress? Like, did you see anybody that really, or any designers that really took over the night? Like, I think took Tom, over the night. I think what Tom Brown <laughs> did an amazing job. He dressed a couple people there. And it it wasn't really so good. much the outfits, just how certain people were moving. Puff just had a kid. Still, still walked the carpet with his girl. They said he was. I thought that was. Bullets. I thought that was ill. He had that big ass. Yeah. No, no, no. Like because not for the fit. They said the reporter. One of the reporters asked him, "Are they official?" It was Lala. Considering it was their a reporter. I didn't Don't know. Lala, Lala is a reporter. reporter. Oh, is she? Yeah. Yes. I thought Where have Terry- you been the last twenty years? I that was, <laughs> started out on MTV. As I thought a reporter. that was Terry's girl on BMF. <laughs> don't nah. Don't do. Don't do that. Lala been in the game for years. So she, she has. I love Lala. She asked uh, if they were official, and and did he give her really. Funny, like no, he stuttery. Love. So love. He Man. said, "Ask her." He ducked it. Love. He said, "Ask her," and she said, "I love the night. fact that she, I love the fact that uh, Carisha said she ain't sharing." And then she showed up with Puff. Like <laughs> you share it. <laughs> Puff got him. Not gonna let a little little baby ruin. Yeah, ruin real love. Oh, I think I think all women should take a, a page out of Carisha's book. Don't yeah. let a baby stop our romance. You know what I mean? Don't let a baby mm. put out our fire. Like Man, you know, what that's Carisha. Don't let a baby day. stop you from walking this red carpet at the Met. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, Look, don't let a baby do that. She ain't let the baby stop that though. She got them looks off. He looks like Morpheus and Zorro. Somebody Black called Black him <laughs> Zorro. That's Somebody funny. called him Sean John Snow, and that <laughs> shit that's fire. sent me. That's I like fire. it. It's a great tweet. I saw that too. Uh, how was his after party? I'm sure you were invited. I was. I, not, I saw the videos. I was looking for you, and you were looking for me. Yeah, yeah like I, in the background of someone. Uh, club you was love. For yeah. No, I wasn't in club, club love. love. I thought you shut. Club I thought love. you shut it down. No, I, I, I thought shut, you brought I all it, the love. I shut the night down. Yeah, I stayed in the crib. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go to club love. It looked like it was a great party. I seen Janelle Monae. Uh, performing on top of the bar. Looking the fuck good. Listen, man. I'm so happy she doesn't dress like a blues brother anymore. (laughs) She was hiding some body under that that Elwood suit. (laughs) She looked good, though. She looked good. Bad Bunny and Kendall Jenner were out running around. Bad Bunny was dressed like a slore, and I loved it. They're still going together. A slore. Of course, you zoom right into her tits. I'm just... No, that's exactly right. Their outfits. (laughs) You want us to do a fit check? So, so bad, because... And then let me ask you this. So, Bad Bunny, (laughs) is he bisexual? Oh, is God. he? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't say he. No, is, I'm just asking because if he's bisexual, going back to our conversation about women being comfortable dating a bisexual man. <laughs> so if this is well, Kendall's dating a guy that is so like, like I, I don't know if he's openly bisexual. Well, he kissed a, a guy on stage. Yes. Judging by Kendall's mother, she's probably pretty tolerant. Yeah, she probably don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what? You know what? 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 I'm gonna let Rory get. I said up. mother. I didn't say I'm, father. I'm, Former yeah. father. Let Rory get his show. I think she's probably pretty progressive, no? Yeah. No, she's not. She's on record. 
being. <laughs> she was like, nah, I'm, I'm not nah, fucking with that. Don't fuck with that shit. All right. Anyways, <laughs> um, speaking of Lala, I saw there was tension with Cardi and Lala. There was, that's not, no, there was a I'm, try, I'm just trying to find <laughs> I was say, shit right. from Shade Room that, that I didn't actually read. I didn't see that. Yo, you were in hot water with, with the Cardi uh, stands. You ended up on a few Cardi stand pages. Wow! Oh, like, shit, look at this. Were? Look at this straight male hater. They were eating him up. How, you are he's, a straight he's male just, hater. He's just mad that Cardi <laughs> won't fuck him. I'm mad Cardi won't fuck. That's what they were saying. I mean, you know the stance. Oh my god! I don't. I just don't understand people. We got to get out of that thing of people thinking it's hate when you don't have the opinion that they have. I saw one comment. This is the face of hatred. Me? No way. I swear to God. I swear to God. Yo, you know what's... And I was like, you know Putin exists. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's Putin in me or me then Putin. I don't know. But the the funny shit is, it's, you know, again, man, people got to get out of this thing of it's hate if we don't have the same opinion or same, you know, stance on music. Again, I'm just a fan of music, a fan of hip hop, Mm. a fan of rap. Um, you know, I love Cardi. She's from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. One of my best friends was her teacher in high school. There's a lot of like, I love no, Cardi. Clean it, clean it up. No, no, I love Cardi. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be up. very clear in that. But as a fan of music first, as a mm. fan of hip hop, as a fan of rap, like if you win best rap album, you got to give me another one. Like, all right, cool. Well, that's dope. But like, where's the next one at? That's all I'm saying. There's no hate. I love Cardi. She's doing thing. I have a right. question. They say, they and they bought this up too. I'm just going to say they. Just they. They. They said that the people you be saying, I love, I love, I love, you really be shitting on them. Like Cardi, the Lakers. You don't love LeBron. the people you shit on? Wayne. I shit, but again, I shit. They say, they, listen, <laughs> listen, me. Listen, <laughs> listen, they say I shit on, they say I shit on LeBron because he's not my goat, like the greatest of all time to me. How is that shitting on somebody? No, it's because you put him seventh. That's, you know it's how many people, do you know how many people have played in the NBA? Yes. To be top seven is not getting shitted on. Okay, where's Cardi then? In what? In the NBA. In, in, <laughs> okay, let's talk about in the, it. In the same so, list. So Cardi in the NBA, right? So say like, we're going to uh-huh. compare it to the NBA. If Cardi won the championship her first year as a rookie, okay. got MVP, all of that, mm-hmm. and then never made Damn. the play, and then never made the playoffs but again. That's not what's happening. But that's not the She, not, she not hasn't the, put out an album. That's a false she's, equivalency. She's Barry Sanders. She has, of course, it's, it's, not, it's, not the same, it's not the same arena. It's not the same field. No, because in basketball, the arena you're now. playing Look. towards the singular goal of winning a championship. Cardi and doesn't music, owe anyone an album. She can she do She owes her fans an album. What are you talking about? All right. She doesn't owe her fans an album? No. All right, you're stupid. Anyway. <laughs> like, Look how easy things are getting cleared yeah, up. Yeah, like, how you, you, right. how you win best best rap album and then say, oh, you don't owe your fans so you album? Cardi, what are you talking Cardi about? Yes, Carmelo. you do. You saying Cardi is Carmelo? No, I'm not. Carmelo Car- never won a championship. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I, I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, he never heard a lot as a fan. He owed I'm me. just saying, when you win best he owed you. <laughs> and then don't give your fans another... Bro, that's like... You're, that's like a, that's kind of whack. That's, that's whack to your fans, bro. So that's why I didn't understand how... They're saying I'm a hater. Like, I'm speaking for her fan base. I'm sure her fan base wants another album. Like, what are we talking about? I'm not shitting on Cardi. I love Cardi. I'm just saying, like, five years after winning Best Rap Album, that's a long time to keep your fan base waiting is all I'm saying. Now, she has put out verses and things like that in between. Yeah, she's she's fed them, you know, appetizers. But, like, where's the main, where's the full, the full course at? She had to go to the gala. Mm. That's what Tough. I'm saying. It's a lot of things that you know. I get it. And I mean, listen, Cardi is Cardi. She lit. She getting that bag all over the place. She doing a fucking thing. But just don't forget about the the music, the album. Mm-hmm. Give us another album. That's all I'm saying. Love Cardi. Shout out to Cardi. And I'm not a hater. Stop making see this Putin and me. I, don't don't. Why they Why they doing that? To I me? was just tagged on the Cardi stand pages. I was yeah, just observing. Man. That's all I was Cardi, doing. Man, but people just try to. Speak Should shit. I have hopped in the comments? My bad. No, 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 no. We That's don't need. Sick. We don't need it. We don't need to do Is that. Is that corny to defend your friends in the comments when they That's get corny. eight on five That's line? Mad. That's all right, corny. You know I don't usually going back and forth. That's mad corny. You can't defend your man in the comments. No, man. In a Cardi stand page, you can never do that. No, I just mean period. Let's take Cardi out of it. Yo, niggas is eating your your man. Yo, Jamil's a lover. Her, not a hater, I promise y'all. Is it worse yeah, to do yeah, that? Tell, tell or, that. Or when all your favorite uh entertainers and athletes create multiple accounts and start defending themselves in there? That's corny too. That's corny. That happens a lot. That's corny yeah. as fuck. You I love I loved how KD kind of got, got out of that you pretty swiftly. It. Like that was nuts, and then we just forgot about KD it. KD burner? Yeah. yeah. Multiple burners. That, that was crazy. You know that's how him and Eddie met. Yeah. Eddie was running the burners. No, like he D, KD DM'd him from one of the burners. He goes, Yo, it's really me. He was like, No, it's not. And they linked and now. And then Eddie revealed history. all his burner accounts. That's fire. That's a great way. To, that's a great way to start a relationship. For real. Y'all got burner accounts? Hell no. No. You got a fence they don't have all? time for, no. for a fence. Mom would have a big fence though. No, I, you think that I created a fake social media account? 
Yeah. Well, offense is not a fake one. It's just like no, it's one. a fake one. The F in fence that stands for fake. What are you talking no, about? No, fine. but it's like your one fine. where you can like fine. really fine. be yourself. Yeah, it's like fun. Yeah, I have a fence though. Need to bring that F back. Uh, we know you have a fence. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like. But my fence is still me. It's not like Damaris. Stop. Random stop. pictures of fucking. Your, 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 Maul's your fence that would be the Proud Boys. Wow. Your fence would go crazy. Why would my fence be the Proud Boys? Because <laughs> you can get your real opinions off. Yeah. Facts. When I get my real opinions off, y'all call me a hater. Cardi's fans did. We didn't call you a hater. No, the Braun fans do. Everybody thinks I'm a hater because I don't have who they have at number one. Ooh, at number but one. you're talking about stands, like Braun sexuals is who you're talking about. Mm. Braun sexuals. Braun sexuals. That's a real thing, by the way. What would your Finsta emoji be? My Finsta emoji? If, if money bag is your calling card on your main page, what would the Finsta mm. be? Uh, probably a penny. <laughs> I don't a, think they a, have I that. I don't know if that's an emoji. Because you don't make or sense. They do have a penny emoji, don't they? I don't think I haven't so. looked through the emojis in a minute. You would never send a chick a penny emoji, just a just a full bag of. There's money. a coin. There's a coin. Yeah, so probably a you coin. You got to start giving some chicks coins instead. Like <laughs> you, you beat the, I think you've diluted some of the money bag. The respect that the money bag no, is out there. You're anymore? inflating the market. I, you no. definitely. <laughs> inflate it. If the money bag is just the stock is plummeting on the Dow right now. No. There's a couple. Of, <laughs> there's a couple that I was like, yeah, no. I get it, but she didn't deserve 27 of these. No. 27. Do you, not, it's you like the U.S. dollar many? at this point, huh? You think about how many? Are you no. it, until your thumb gets it's tired? Just, it's like, just like life. It's just what happens in the moment. Like I don't. Oh, I don't, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a it's feeling, a feeling you it's put a feeling those that you have. Do to you have, have any idea? Like the most? Like what's the most you've unloaded under a pair? Uh, it was one. I won't say who who, who it was. It was <laughs> one that I was trying to <laughs> unload. Find it. Back the Brink Up's truck, uh, Brink's truck up for, and uh, Excuse they me. said our community has restrictions and guidelines so that we don't. I was like, fuck, they won't let me get it off. <laughs> they wouldn't let me post. <laughs> you it. put so many spam. that IG That's wouldn't why. let you. Yeah, they wouldn't That's let me get my shit off. It's uh, all right, IG be hating sometimes. It's fine. Carly Hustle, who's, who's big over at Apple Music. Shout out to Carly. Love Carly to death. Um, and look at me name dropping my industry connects. Okay. Ew. Just texted me out of nowhere with a screenshot of a lotto photo and mall. This is an aggressive amount of bags. Oh. Lotto? <laughs> let me see. Let me see so, the picture. So, I would do it too. I said way too many bags. We know. <laughs> What's the picture? I would do it too. It's okay, mall. They were sitting. They were oh, sitting. Oh my God, that's sick. You know what What's Look, wrong with it? They talk I about just, me in text messages, but then he says they were sitting. You, they didn't, were tell, sitting. you didn't say they were sitting to Carly, though. Of course I didn't. Exactly. Why would I do that? See? Why would you do that? <laughs> that's fake shit. And she listens to this yeah, pod. That's fake yeah. shit. But you have to hey, think Carly. it is It is kind of funny in the middle of the day just getting a, a text from someone that is clearly busy with running Apple Music shit. It's yeah. Like, this, <laughs> clearly. this is way too many bags. Focusing on, focusing on the money bags. I'm like, uh, oh my are. God, that's sick. Wow. She's, trying to, she's trying to upload the new Future album and looks over at Mall's account like that is too many bags. She three looks, rows she, of money bags. She fine as hell. She looks very pretty. In and that's photos. three on the desktop. You know it's worse on the phone. Oh, on the phone is nuts. Does she not look great in that picture? She does. No, that's worth three my rows. See what I'm saying, yeah. yo? I mean, look, they be trying to make me sound like does Lotto not look great right there? We're not saying that that'll, it doesn't. She that'll doesn't. keep the value of the dollar up, but it's it's other ones I've seen on the Explore page. Where I'm like, oh, you say that he got he like she it. shouldn't get the same as Lotto. He did it on some uggos. Oh, that's nah, what you're I mean, but it's, it, it, it's other things though. It might be a better. better nah, you be dropping them on some pogs. I seen him drop it on a car. I think before. I drop them on everything. That's why people just people only <laughs> just see for balance. People reason. only see the people only see the women. Like but they he think gave, it's all for women. But he gave Rory three for Rory's debut music video. All, all men <laughs> with, get all, with, all, with Jay Electronica. Yeah, all men get three bags. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's okay. the most you'll drive under a man's pay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Men, cars, even sports. Jordan. I think yeah. more gave me four one time. Ooh, damn. More gave me four. Okay. Yeah, I probably ain't like the background. <laughs> I think I was literally like in Malibu in front of the entire ocean. Yeah, that probably like, that was sure. a cool. I wasn't feeling yeah. that. Yeah. that was but we know you can't swim. We were with logic. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We were going to throw you a life raft. Yeah. Wow. But I'm glad the Met Gala is gone and over with uh, so they can get everybody can get the hell out of New York. If, if you were invited, would you go? To the Met? Yeah. Yeah, I would go. What would y'all okay. wear? With the cat theme? I mean, it depends or? what the theme was. Let's say if it was a cat. Just do the cat. What kind of hat would you? The give cat. Them? The theme was not cat. Theme Mall, was would, okay. you, would you flip the cat ears upside down? Or like a Charlotte Bobcats logo? Mm. Mm-hmm. You could flip the cat ears. You could wear the right. Jordan jersey for the Charlotte Bobcats Ooh. when he was the owner. Yeah. No, nah, I would do something different. I would probably go as like uh, Black Panther. Not nah, the Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> Black Panther. That'd be Irish. sick. That's funny. I go as Bobby Newton. <laughs> 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 that'd be fire that'd be awesome oh, that'd be crazy they were like yo excuse me sir you only have one invite I'd be like no the Panthers are with me <laughs> the Panthers Pan- all 10,000 of them are with me <laughs> meanwhile I'm your plus one yeah <laughs> put you in a kufi and all that kufi. just get this shit off um, I dress I don't know it's Baisley I go against the grain wow yeah they're not letting cat you theme. in yeah they're not letting you in I they're not that. letting me in if, regardless. so you're no, a, so a you dog invited. hunting cat so you mm. the white man hunting that's this crazy we could dress as cat dog 
I know like hard. Cat dog. I would love. Oh, that. you might be too old for cat dog. He doesn't know what. He's definitely too old for cat dog. I think I don't know what cat dog is. You, you know what cat dog is? I grew up during cat dog. Yes, I'm surprised. You were selling crack when cat dog was out. I didn't expect you to know. Two things can be true. You were bagging up. Bagging up to cat dog is crazy. I know how to out of scale. I knew what that was. That's seven grams right there. We ain't tripping. Turn nah, the cat dog fam. back on, man. That show yeah. was fire. Holding a mason jar, watching yeah, cat dog. Yeah, absolutely. Get the Pyrex and turn the cat dog on. Yeah, I know a cat dog. Y'all gonna, hey, yo, y'all gonna stop coming at me like I'm 90 years old, man. I don't like that. 91. No, I just feel like you don't you... know about cat dog. Why wouldn't I know about cat dog? But it is kind of weird that you know about cat dog. Why? Kids know weird. about kids know about cartoons that came out when I was a kid. You watched like, all that, right? Yeah, I watched all that. Yeah, I see. But that yeah. makes more sense. Cat Dog was more like when I was. Cat Dog came out in '98. That came out at the same time. How old were you in '98? That's what I'm saying. In '98, 16, 17? I think it was 16. That's old for Cat Dog. I don't think 16 that's is old. not no. old for Cat Dog, bro. I don't know. I might have been watching Cat Dog at 16. How yeah. was that? Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wasn't like running home to watch it, I was but sick. I knew what Cat <laughs> Dog <laughs> was. No, you were running home from that. I know what Cat Dog was. At, at six. Who wouldn't know what Cat Dog is? That's like saying I don't know what Mario is. Like, what are you talking about? Well, I know who I mean, Mario I mean, now I think is. you're putting a little too much on Cat Dog to put him next to Mario. I'm just saying, like the a, singer it's a big, or the game. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot him <laughs> one day. I promise you, I'm gonna shoot him one day, right in his leg. I mean, you know what guns do, this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need. All to, right. You, go, you don't need. <laughs> All to right. Give a trigger. Just, just the sight of it. Just show it. Running. Just, just, <laughs> just little branded, flash dance and you're good. Like, all right. <laughs> the Patreon comments were killing me. <laughs> I couldn't believe you were that scared of a gun. It was calling all types of. Like I knew he was soft, but goddamn, I saw this fucking liberal weenie. I saw something pop up when they said Julian and his homies playing Call of Duty. I already knew it. I didn't. I didn't even click on it. I already. No, I said I already know what that's about. I'm not even clicking on I love on Call that. of Duty though. Julian, I, plays, I bet you do love Call of Duty. Julian plays Call of Duty and goes, "Hey, is your safety on?" <laughs> <laughs> Don't run around the map like that. Hey, I'm calling the police. <laughs> is that registered? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah, you yeah. was just bagging a weed at that time. I know about Rocco's Mo- Modern Life. Yeah, okay. all of that shit. I used to watch all of that shit. I don't watch it. No so, more. what's your? What would your favorite cartoon of all time be, Mo? My favorite cartoon of all time, mm-hmm. Mickey Ooh, Mouse and the Steamboat. Um, mm-hmm. The original, the original Popeyes. Popeyes. <laughs> man, Popeyes is legend though. Y'all, y'all laughing. Y'all laughing at Popeye. Y'all don't know Popeye like I know Popeye. See what I'm saying? Not uh, my favorite. You told Popeye to eat spinach. That was I your did. suggestion. Yeah. My favorite. That's why I'm vegan now. Uh, my favorite. My favorite. Uh, Popeye was, was the influence. Yeah. yeah. My favorite cartoon probably was Thundercats. Thundercat. Okay. Yeah, that's probably that's cool. my favorite cartoon. Show Thundercats. Race. There was He Man. There was Voltron. Yeah. yeah. I like Voltron. Roy. I, I mean, I was that Rugrats era, man. Legendary. <laughs> Rugrats. <laughs> That's that's around the same time. Rugrats, Rugrats is your favorite cartoon. Uh, Chucky made me feel seen. Oh my! Oh my god! god. Yeah, I thought yeah. I was a Finster. Rugrats is ninety-one. What was your favorite? What was your I thought you was another cartoon? F after saying that. Oh, a friend. A Finster. Friend. A Don't big big F. <laughs> Don't do that. Rugrats was a very important cartoon. Yeah, yeah, you can't hate on that. Babies were talking. Um, I loved Hey Arnold. Hey, hey Arnold's, Arnold's good. Yeah. Hard. You look like you liked Hey Arnold. What is that? I mean, scored, fi- finally the city kids got a cartoon scored oh. by a jazz composer. Great soundtrack. Thank you, Julian. Shut the fuck. up. Thank you, Julian. Beautifully <laughs> composed by jazz. What? What did he just say? Just Who watch your cartoon, fuck? Julian. Who cares about no, this? No, if, um, you, if you went back to listen, watch the show, you would actually really like the music. The throughout. jazz. It's great. Rocco's Modern Life was, was high up there for me. Uh, in my later adolescence, Rocket Power, when I was trying to skateboard, love that. Mm. Don't say mm to me. What about when Doug? I like Rocket Power. You, you, you like look like you would like Doug, Rory. Of course I love oh, yeah. Doug. Skeeter was black. Skeeter was black. They made him blue. They Matter of fact, how I treat people. Basley is all like, influenced by Doug and Porkchop. I'm like, learning so house, much about everything. like you. You have not named like a violent cartoon yet. What was a what, violent what are cartoon? Violent what are violent cartoons? Like Tom and Jerry? No, like Thundercats. No, we fighting. grew up in like Tom, a, Tommy Tom asked and... Lil why she didn't have a dick in Rugrats. Like, yeah. I was. It was. That's true. Yeah, but that more so speaks. <laughs> it was your, racy. That most more so speaks to your social awkwardness. Like you would turn the cartoons to have those conversations for you and then you would go to your friends like hey you know it's okay for us to have these conversations like no. wait, 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 wait. wait so I watched Rugrats as in kindergarten yeah. and then went into kindergarten and just started asking women why they didn't have dicks yeah that's how it happens you learn it at home and yeah. you take it to the school for sure see and so, first of all uh, Roger beat up Doug all the time it was violent oh my god Doug, Doug didn't have it all look at that look at what Roger's wearing Roger gave off school shooter. So energy. did you guys like Courage the Cowardly Dog? <laughs> Patty or was the kind only of fire on the low. Oh no, I liked it. Patty's, I think Patty's that cute. might be too old for y'all. What? Courage the Cowardly Dog. 
Who? No, Courage I know of it. was fucking hilarious. Courage is great. Now that I think about Type it, Pepper Ann too, redheads used to be seen. Like, we used to have... Yeah, they had redheads. Yeah, you had Raggedy Ann, right? Wasn't she a redhead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... Technically, Annie. we had Annie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have Ice yeah. Spice, yeah. Ice, Ice Spice, Spice. Yeah. y'all will see. I've been represented well throughout the years. Jim, and I Pan. think so at least. You know, I don't know. I feel like our like our cartoons were better than you guys' cartoons because that was our childhood. Probably, we have the same cartoons. No, no we, we don't. don't. You were watching Fairly Odd Parents. Ooh, yeah, that shit, that was that shit was fire. Fairly Odd Parents. Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron is basically That's Mario not, Brothers. That's not no. how y'all didn't have that? Captain Planet. Who? Oh, I, I definitely watch Captain Planet. See, I don't Who even know funny. Captain Planet. See Powerpuff Puff Girls? Powerpuff Girls Power Puff Girls were fire. Puff you know Puff Puff Girls Girls were fire. If you ever era. walked in the crib and saw me watching Powerpuff Puff Girls, I oh, I was about to say, get the fuck you out You wouldn't here. bag it up to Powerpuff Girls? Did they get like butt-ass naked when they switched? How do you know that? I didn't know Why do you know that? I don't know that episode. That's No, I think it was like in every episode when they switched over. You saw that on Pornhub? In my anime category. Those are different Powerpuff Girls. Eddie, you look like you used to watch the Care Bears. No. Because he looks like one? Do I look like a Care Bear? You used to watch Teletubbies? I look Teletubbies? Like, oh my God, I, like I love the Teletubbies. Sorry. What's wrong with Teletubbies? Hey. Y'all didn't watch Teletubbies? No, of course not. That, that show was creepy. What did you just say? It was a boomer fool. Remember the uh, baby in the sun from Center Teletubbies? Show. The people that write these shows are sick. Why? I just feel like anyone that writes for, for children, children are weird. Or maybe they have a childlike wonder. I, Ian, I think that's a problem. Like, I think we should look <laughs> at it in exactly, background. That's exactly the problem. Mm. It's just odd. Like, whoever wrote that Rugrats episode of Tommy baby? asking Lil why she didn't have a dick, like, who did that and can we see? I feel like they'd sneak in. They used to, Rugrats was always good about sneaking in, like, one-liners for the adults. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They always threw, like, some subtle shit in there that we wouldn't catch when we were younger. Phil and Lil's uh, mom was gay. Remember that? No. She was not gay. Was she, she gay? She was just, like, athletic. Oh, she was butch. Yeah, she was. She See? wasn't gay though. Nah, she's bush. Well, right. that's what they say now. Well, if you're athletic, wait, didn't Chucky's father start fucking uh, Lizzie's mom? Excuse me. First Lizzie. interracial couple. Maybe that was in the later seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a whole different program. <laughs> the fuck no, are you talking they did about? Rugrats as teenagers for like yeah, one season. Grown, and got canceled. Up, all yeah. grown I was up. too old, but I went. I, I took a peek. You were in the streets, but I peeked it too. Yeah, you, know? you had to. You no, you didn't have to. No, you didn't. I wanted to see how Angela turned out. Yeah, you used to watch Saved Angelica. by the Bell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched Angelica, Def- Angelica. Angelica definitely has OnlyFans now. Saved by the Bell. With her mom. Saved by the Bell. Was Saved the by shit. the Bell is fire. That was the shit. I would watch it. I movie. don't remember that cartoon. I watched it as, oh, well, obviously, the. It's not yeah. a cartoon. Even cartoon. Stevens. Even Stevens. Was Even fun. Stevens was classic. classic. Cousin Skeeter. Woo! Cousin that, Skeeter. Was, that was fire. That was. You remember Cousin you Skeeter? You don't know about Cousin Yo, Skeeter. Yo, show him what Cousin Skeeter looked like. You think I don't know Cousin Skeeter? Oh, I, yeah. Yo, why do y'all think I'm 97 years old? I don't think you're that old. It's just, just tell me why. I don't know where the blur line is. <sighs> yes, I know Me- Cousin Megan Skeeter. Good and Cousin Skeeter. Woo! <laughs> don't make that noise again. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was kind of weird, too. It was a puppet. A Muppet. So this is Al- this is basically Alf. Yeah. See, I'm showing my age, but this is Alf. <laughs> yeah. Alf. Oh wow, uh, that's wow, that's smart old. guy. Boy meets world. Smart. Yeah. Smart Boy guy was world. weird. Boy meets world was everything. Topanga, Topanga might be my my first white woman crush. That's probably why I love white women. Because it's Topanga. Because Topanga. Yeah, I mean, th- not a bad start. What was the What was the girl? The cute girl on a Blossom. Not Blossom. Her friend. I was born in 1990. I don't yes, even know what I was born in '94. So you don't know Blossom? No, I don't know was, Blossom. Did that come on after "Touched by an Angel"? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't remember Blossom? No. Oh man. No, I don't remember. This. I don't recognize None one person in familiar. this image. I don't know anybody. Y'all don't remember here. Blossom? Of course no, not. Please stop saying it. No, man, that's crazy. What is this 1984? Nah, you, you gotta, you gotta binge. You gotta binge. You gotta binge Blossom. You gotta binge Blossom. Binge Blossom. Blossom. It's not yeah, binge like Blossom. Uh, it debuted in uh, July 5th, 1990. Yeah. Gen- Jenna Von Oy. Remember she was on. Uh, None of us were born. She was on. What's the show with uh, the Parkers? Jenna Von Oy. She was on the Parkers. Well, the earliest I did was Growing Pains when Leo was on it. That's his like the first memory I really have. So then you would remember Blossom. You should remember Blossom. Joey Lawrence was on Blossom. Was only on until 95. That's still five years. Look, I was watching Full House, Fresh Prince, Good Fresh Times. Prince like- Do you remember when Nickelodeon added well, how different you strokes out? Good at Times and don't know what Blossom is. Because Good Times, good were times ran a lot of reruns. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, but to watch that and That's not all watch- they had at that point. They weren't <laughs> making. <laughs> they couldn't put yeah, anything else on. I was born yeah. <laughs> Dude, You was watching Good Times yeah, and don't know fire. what Blossom is? That's sick. Listeners, please tell us if you know what the fuck Blossom, Blossom. is. Please. No one knows. Do you guys is. remember when they added different strokes to. Nick at night. Yes. 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 I was so Boy, excited. was that a time capsule? Janet was in it. Cosby show. Remember when Arnold and his friend almost got molested? 
All right, maybe maybe it's a different episode. <laughs> Yo, oh, what show? You, different strokes. Different strokes. Yeah, I can't remember that episode. You remember the most interesting episodes, huh? Well, that's the one that spoke most to him <laughs> in, his, <laughs> in his in his childhood. He related the most to that episode. That was a very very trying. But at time least in his like life. Arnold had the idea of like, hey, maybe this is a weird scenario. But the whole time, like, yeah, he's a fucking adult. Yeah, I remember watching diff- uh, Good Times when uh when uh it was Penny. That was Janet Jackson, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. When she died, remember yeah. she died. Oh man, I cried. Keenan Kel was a legendary era for us. 100%. Yeah. Good Burger. All that Keenan Kel. Good Burger used to play consistently. So, are you are you game. excited about part 2 of the movie? Good Burger no. too? No. Why? Never excited about part Is that, 2. I didn't even see like that was happening. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah, it's confirmed. <sighs> they said welcome to Good Burger, shit. home of the Good Burger. But you know what? They did it on like Fallon, I think they announced it. We got to yeah. milk it. We talked about it. Yeah, together. I guess. I mean, I do think we need to give Keenan Thompson his his flowers. Yeah. He's one of those that I, d- I don't think gets the credit for the career. What that do you he's mean had. by one of those? Mm. Uh, black people. Uh, oh, okay, good. Just want to make sure. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a comedian that I feel like just never, people don't bring him up. The yeah. way it took so long for Jamie Foxx, for people to realize how talented he was, I think is happening with Keenan. Mm-hmm. And I know Keenan doesn't make music or anything like that, but it took a while for us to realize how talented Jamie Foxx was. Keenan okay. Thompson, I think the same thing. When Lauren steps down, there's always this speculation about who's going to step up. And Keenan's name gets put out there. I just don't see them giving that throne to anyone that's black. Do you, yeah. do you I guys mean, if agree he, or feel differently? If he converts to Judaism, maybe. But true, true. <laughs> yeah, maybe if Lenny I, Kravitz takes him under his wing. I don't see that. Right? Not not anybody. Not I don't agree with the not anybody black, but uh, just him. Maybe so, Che. I, I can't see Che. Yeah, I would I see, see uh, a John Mulaney. Mulaney. I would see a Seth Meyers taking over that role. Like, that's where... It's somebody that's in the NBC uh, threshold... That will never like maxed out lifelong contract. Colin Seth Meyers is never leaving NBC. Colin Jones could probably. You know who would actually do very well on SNL as like a continuous person on there? Issa. Ray? Yeah. yeah, but Issa will build her own shit. Yeah. Uh, she's already leapfrogged them. that like yeah. part of her career. <clears throat> no, but I I agree with you. I agree with you. But I think that Issa Ray being on SNL like continuously for may say two or three years. I think that because she's already solidified in Hollywood and TV, but I think that that's kind of like a a badge of like, yo, I did SNL for three years after I did all of this at HBO and had success with my own show that I wrote and produced. And they wouldn't pay her enough. Yeah, it's not. But I understand. But and does that badge matter anymore? Not for her. It's n- uh, not, not for, I'm saying in general. SNL does the writing for SNL. The way it used to. I think it meant more before I think that, than it does now. I think that it could mean a lot with Issa's talent because I think that she brings SNL back to a certain level. I think she would give SNL more validity. But this is what I'm saying. Which so, is crazy. I think, but. Right. So I think that that's why it would, that would be big because I think if she goes to SNL, she brings a certain level of entertainment, funny, uh, humor back to SNL, it brings a different, it brings her audience, people that love her, they now go to SNL to watch her. I think that that's like a good, because now she gets to say, yo, when SNL kind of was like, really not on everybody's like, yo, I got to watch. Yeah. When I went there and I was writing and I was a part of that, you know, the 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 the, the ratings went up, uh, it brought in an entirely different new audience. Now you get people that normally probably wouldn't do SNL wanting to do it because Issa is there now. For sure. I just yeah. think that it brings a whole different dynamic and a whole different feel into a already legendary classical improv stand-up show like SNL. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that I, don't I think see Issa them, is great for I don't this. see them giving her the bag or the freedom to do it yeah. the way she needs to do it. And it's it's grueling. They, the hours and the schedule. She wouldn't be able to work on a Anything lot of others. No, yes, yeah. I'm saying and I understand audience that. Too. The audience is, is very... Upper West Side Jewy across the whole country. Like I'm not just saying that's well, who watches it. Manhattan. <laughs> but like the type of the type of person that watch I put my mother's not Jewish. I put my mother in that category too. Like that's their audience. And I don't know if Issa's genius would come across Crossover, yeah. the way it properly should with that audience. Why? And I don't even know if it's that whole SNL writing for like that being the Harvard of comedy to move on isn't needed anymore. And that's why they've suffered because the geniuses of writers don't need to go there anymore to solidify or even get a new show. They can start their own shit. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But I just, I just think that, again, somebody like Issa with her, her audience that she brings, mm-hmm. SNL is 
it's not what it was, but it's still a legendary mm. platform sure. and mm-hmm. something that all comedic actors and writers aspire to say, hey, I worked on SNL at one point. I just think that, you know, somebody like Issa can bring a certain level of entertainment back to SNL. Well, either way, they're all fucked because the writers are on strike. Yeah. The writers are on strike. And I think for good reason, though. I think that, you know, a lot of the times we overlook people that are just not in front of the camera all the time. Yeah. You overlook them. It's easy to overlook them because they're not the face, they're not the star. Um, star. But, you know, the writers are very important. Writers are very important and they should be uh, compensated the way they should be. Um, They should have, you know, the rights and things just like the people in front of the screen, the actors and the faces of these shows have and the, the way you protect them. You got to protect the writers. A lot of the time, the writers are the brains. Uh, You know, it, it takes a, a great actor and a person to execute ideas and execute scripts and things like that. But a great writer is somebody that can walk in any room, bring value, um, is able to tap in with the talent that you have, know their strengths, play to their strengths. Um, and it's fucked up when the writers get overlooked because they are a very intricate and important part to any entertainment. Yeah. And for those that don't know, um, I think this is the first writer's strike since what, 2007? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, writer's Union, Writer's Guild is going on strike. Um, the head of the union suggested that each TV show should have a certain amount of writers no matter what for a certain amount of time no matter what, even if they're not needed. So they are guaranteed money to not waste these people's time because they have a bunch of offers, a bunch of different gigs, and you're just you're playing with people's time at this mm-hmm. point, and you're playing with their money, and you're just treating them as a, this disposable thing. Right. So they said, "Fuck that, we're going back on strike until you meet." Um, and this is this is the beauty of unions. This feels like the '60s again. Someone dig up Hoffman, not your brother, mm-hmm. the money nickname. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is why unions are important, though. Yeah, because you're you're able to unionize and stop bullshit from happening. And I think we see the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon going dark immediately. Mm-hmm. Late Show with Stephen Colbert is going dark immediately. We're going to see the effects the same way we did in 2007. Good. And with the amount of TV that comes out, TV being at its highest peak, in my opinion, mm-hmm. ever, mm-hmm. Yeah. the writers going on strike is stopping an entire fucking industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the volume game that Netflix, Hulu, all these fucking streaming services have to do, you can't miss a week. It, it fucks up your whole year if certain TV shows miss a week. I don't want to feed into conspiracies, but are we starting to see the effects of AI with shit like this? Are people disposable? Are writers disposable? You mean in terms, I don't know if AI is... Affecting this yet. uh, Yeah, I don't think AI is being used for any of these shows yet, but maybe to your point, maybe because they're lacking staff, they'll just start subsidizing these roles with AI technology to be like, okay, fine. If we don't have people do it, let's plug it into a program and we'll be able to create from there. And that see, and that's the problem because maybe that's not confirmed. No, yeah, no, we're just talking, just, yeah. you know. Um, but see, that's a dangerous thing to play with because you still need to have people in these rooms that live life that are actually outside, moving around, day to day things to be able to put pen to paper and to come up with ideas uh, for actors and actresses to execute on 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 camera. Like you want to remove, you don't want to treat writers fairly. You don't want to pay them what they deserve to be paid. Um, with technology, we know how that is. With chat, GPT, and all this other shit, AI, you know, you can type in these things and it print out an entire script for you. But it's still no, it's no real soul in that. It's no real experience in that. It's no real energy in that. And I think that that is going to cause a a major shift in entertainment. If, if you know, shows start leaning towards that to say, oh, we don't need this many writers, we can have some artificial intelligence just spit out a whole script for us. Mm. I don't know if you want to go down that road. Well, I mean, I think they're just going to see it as far as the volume game that they always wanted to play and how important having a fully staffed writing room really is. Mm -hmm. It's hard to put something out every single night. I don't care how talented you are, how funny you are. If you don't have the manpower, uh, to your point, of people just having to live life. Sometimes people aren't funny that day. You need a staff of people yeah. that can fill in when other people are not as funny that day. Like you can't just have two writers that are geniuses and expect us to put out a full season or a, a nightly show and it hit every single time. Like, yeah, you have to pay people maybe not to work some days. Mm-hmm. There, there was a clip going around of one of the writers that was striking. Uh, not sure who he worked for or wrote for, but pretty much he, he had a really good uh, comparison just to 
provide more clarity. He was pretty much saying they're trying to commodify riders to reduce them to the role of an Uber driver, where they bring them in for a very short, limited window of time, get all they can, like squeeze them like creatively until they're done and then just dispose of them. So to Rory's point, like where it used to be, you book me for eight hours, I'm getting paid for those eight hours, no matter how much time we're in this room. Now they're trying to like pay them by like the minute and mm -hmm. just kind of use them and then just get rid of them as quickly as they can. Which is, I, which is so fucked up because so much of writing sometimes is not writing. Yeah. Like it's you just kind of need to be there for the week to fully understand the vibe of what is going on. And, you know, I've, I've talked with writers that get booked to do like the punch up, like they'll write a full script and then they'll hire someone for a day mm -hmm. to punch up the entire script, which means like add in tags or like rewrite stuff or add in yeah. jokes here and there. And it ends up being damn near the whole script. And it's like, I just got paid $3,000 for changing your entire vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you just threw me out. I don't even get right. I'm not even really in the credits because the punch up shit is not written by. It's I'm just some ghost that literally made your shit better than what it was. And not, now you're giving me three grand, which with taxes at that point. What am I really going to get? I think 1500 bucks writers all around, not <clears throat> even just in Hollywood and TV and stuff. I think in music as well, because um, I've seen a lot of <clears throat> writers complaining about the amount of points that they're able to get on a record and how much they're being paid publishing wise and all of this stuff and royalties. Writers are just not getting enough credit, period, across the board for how much they contribute. That is the song. That is the show. That is the art. The writers, not the performers, not the actors, not the obviously producers are important. Well, it goes hand in hand because you need you can have a great writer. But if you don't have a good actor to execute those words and that the emotion in the script, it falls flat. So they, it, they're equally as important. I just think that writers are not being treated equally. They're not I, being treated equal to the talent. You equal think to the, writing is equally as important as the talent? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you can write the I, best shit in the world. If you bring a nigga in here that don't know how to read and can't act and can't and just sound like a robot reading on camera, that shit is going to fall flat. Of course. But and a lot of those writers but, are writing with that person in mind, knowing how they're going to. Oh, yeah, it. for sure. For sure. You definitely write about that. So but, I think the thing is they're fighting for is equality to the talent on on, on camera. Yeah. I don't even think right now they're equality. being treated I think as they just less than paid. I just think they just want to be paid. Well, I don't even think they're yeah, fighting well, for equality. They don't want to be, be being paid. Well, basically, they want to be paid. If not a equal living to the wage. talent, a living shit. wage. I don't think they're they don't want to be for that much. Right now, they're being treated as less than, as mm -hmm. they're 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 disposable, and they're not. You know what I mean? Like like you said, back to the Uber thing. I find it funny when people complain about the Uber drivers talking to them, because if you grew up in New York City taking cabs, that was like part of the culture. A cab driver could tell you shit about the city you have no idea about, like ever. Like what? A cab driver is literally like. Yo, it's this going on on this side. They're building this on, on this side. It's crazy over here. Y'all hate it. They're moving out of this part of the neighborhood. This is crazy. Like somebody that's in the streets as much as cab drivers navigating through the city that you live in, you want to get in the car and you be like, y'all don't talk to me. Like I think it's weird getting in the car with a stranger, number one, and then don't talk to me. Well, now you have to give cab drivers directions. So that's why I mind my business. Oh, most of the time you do. <laughs> like they, they just follow so that GPS and it's like, but even that, before GPS, if you got a good cab driver, he would get you to where you was going a, around traffic. You wouldn't have to sit in the... Now people want to get in the car and it's just like, we've lost the, the sense of just being like interacting with one another. Like we want to replace humans with just machines and GPS, like navigation. Like don't... Like what about just knowing different routes and because you live here and you're from here? Like I enjoy getting into a cab and a cab driver tell me things about the city that I had no idea was going on. I think that's dope. Unless it's a woman. Right. I just don't think that women should be driving. Yeah. I, don't, no, I hate we know that. Mom. I didn't no, mean not to go down see, on that no, tangent. No, because <laughs> not, not saying that women can't drive. I just feel weird sitting in the back seat and a woman driving me. That but shit. you also hate how they drive. And you hate women. No, I love women. Okay. But I just don't. I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with a woman just driving worst. me around. I'm uncomfortable. What if she that. knows that's the weird. city and like knows about no, transportation? That's, that's like great. Listen, I've had some great cab drivers. Like one cab, like I had to ask. I'm like, how many brothers do you have? And she just laughed. She was like, "Why?" Because my drop. I'm talking. About she was whipping that shit. Like mm. you had Queen Latifah and what's that movie? Taxi. Taxi. Yo, she was whipping that <laughs> fucking car. Like I, I was mad. Like I was almost nervous in the backseat. I'm like, "Yo, I, she can drive clearly, but slow the fuck down." Like she was mm. getting in and out of lanes near trucks. And I asked. Her, I said, "How many brothers do you have?" And she told me she had seven brothers. I'm the only girl. I said, "I, I knew it. There's no way you didn't grow up around a bunch of boys. I knew it because you drive like 
a fucking crazy man that just shot the wrong nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why are you driving like this? Got me to where I wanted to go. It was a great driver, but yeah. it was I'd never seen a woman drive like that. That was that was she, crazy. She was Kim in Junior Mafia. Oh my god, she was driving the fuck out of that car. But I, I I love women drivers. I just don't like being. Let me sit in the front with you. Let's do that. Yeah, but back back to the writers, um, and just us talking about them. Give give the writers their just due because we've all heard uh, s- fucking we've all seen pay Quentin or- Miller. God damn it, <laughs> I agree. That's what I was gonna say though. Like I literally, we've all heard reference tracks, and yeah. If one person, you could give it to Drake, but if Drake doesn't get get on it and you give it to somebody else, it could still be a good song. Like the writing is what's important. That's why I said that I personally think that the writers are more important because you can give one good actress a script and if she can't do it, you go and get another good actress. That episode with Quentin was important to me. For it was a, a great episode. Of, yeah, for, for a number of reasons. I just think that, you know, writers, you, especially in hip hop, when you say, uh, you know, this this rapper had a writer on this record. Mm-hmm. Or you know, this rapper had somebody write that. It's it's always it's always a, a negative. It's a knock because we feel like the art of hip hop is the art of storytelling. St- tell your story. Uh, we know that rappers lie. A lot of these what? rappers are not living their rhymes. Never. They, they never did none of the half the shit they talking about. Damn. So just the fact <laughs> that they wrote it themselves means like you know more than if somebody has somebody write it for them because they wrote it themselves but never lived it. Mm-hmm. It's all false. It's all lies. We'll we'll accept that. Of course, you better not have nobody else in the room helping you. <laughs> yeah. We can't accept that. It's just, it's it's stupid, man. It's like, why not have somebody in the room that can hear something that you can't hear, can uh, speak about things that you may not know about, can tell you the new slang or what's going on, you know, the, the terms that they're using in the streets now. Like, I just don't see the knock in having a writer that's great at what they do and that's able to help you enhance what you already do. Like, but only in hip hop. In R and B, we don't care who writes the record. We know half the time we don't even know who wrote the record. But that, okay, that's fine. But I'm still of the thought that they can't be in the MC rapper combo. Then, like, that would be like saying Leo is an amazing writer because he delivered Wolf of Wall Street so well. No, like I, he can't. He can't be in the writer combo. No, but not now. If you don't write any of your raps, I agree. But if you have help on a few records. Mm. I don't like think that singles. that takes you out of the MC category. If you wrote some of all of your your biggest records you actually wrote and you write for other artists as well, I don't think that just because you had people help you on certain records that that automatically takes your MC badge off your your, your, your jacket. But the you biggest know. the biggest records are usually the ones that they had help on. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about that. That's case by case. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's That's case by case. That's not all the time. But only in rap do we frown at hearing another rapper had help on a record some of our favorite artists we know that they're not writing these records love the record great song we still jam to it still listen to it still stream it still so it's like we need to get away from that and just be like yo listen i love the fact like we heard stories of kanye if you're in the room and you have leather pants on and kanye writes a bar about leather pants he gives you you know some 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 rights on the record just because you had on leather pants and inspired a thought like that's rare. Though. Unless you're designer. That's very rare. That is rare. But I'm just saying, things like that, to me, why not? That's dope. I don't know. I'm, of course, I'm on the side of music being a collaborative thing, and everyone should get writers and help, and it should not just be one person rapping and one producer. It should be a, a team effort. I'm still, maybe it's the weird white boy rap love shit. I still put that stat differently with rappers, though. You should, you, you, you should write your own rhymes. You, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but again... If you write a lot of your own rhymes and on certain records you had help, does that mean that I'm never taking away Drake's card if he didn't write uh, Just Come On, We're Going Home? I don't care. If I find out he didn't write 6 p.m. in New York, yeah, but you know I he feel wrote, You know he, wrote, he didn't write a lot of those kind of rap records. Which is fine with me. I didn't even care. Does with that Quentin affect- Miller and the energy, we talked about it. I thought the reference, I can't believe Drake even heard that and did that with energy. Mm-hmm. And running through the six, like mm-hmm. he heard those references and made them hit records. That's mm-hmm. a, that's an art. I don't give a fuck about that. If I start finding out you didn't write like the rap joints, then I'm gonna feel away. If you if you didn't write certain shit about like your mom, <laughs> then I'm gonna be like yo, <laughs> wait, no, we all got yeah, we all have moms. Yeah, but no, but then I'm gonna be like, all right, how 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 son knew about your moms that well? Like how was unless he able you're to AI, some like you had it like moms existed, mm. maybe AI. You would have never actually birthed. I just think it's. I just. I don't know, man. I, again, just. I just. I just respect writers. Um, 
And I think that again, they just they just need their just due. They need their respect. They're they're necessary. There's nothing wrong with treating them equally, treating them with what they want, what they're asking for. They deserve it. Hollywood, pay the fucking writers. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. I'm with you, and especially the amount of money in Hollywood now. Like streaming, the way streaming saved pay them, so pay many the businesses. Writers, man. Pay the writers. No, no matter what your opinion on streaming is. It saved music. It saved TV. You have the money. Pay them. Right. Well, can it's me, Eden, and Julian go on a um, strike? Why do we do that? Are we writers? I don't want to Are you guys strike. a union? I have no desire. You to go could unionize. I don't know why she's looping me into this. We're not unionized? Just say you want to go on strike. You gang? Go on strike for what? For what? Yeah. The writers. You we just went to LA. Oh. Right. What do you write? What are you talking about? We don't write. You write. For the pod? What did you write on this pod? We're not in the writers guild. You know that, right? <laughs> oh. We're not unionized? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? We're not unionized. If you did do you pay your union dues? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, oh, wow. Yeah. See, yeah. now it's too much. Oh, now it's Wait, too, it's much too much. Of dues? When you have to pay your union dues, now we're it's too much. use the company card. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's too much. So get yourself some SAG health insurance. <laughs> see, how that, see how that goes. Um, but speaking of uh, comedy writers, Roy Woods Jr. did the, uh, the White House correspondent dinner. Yes. I'm getting sick of these. Why? You don't Why? like them? The you jokes are amazing. The self awareness is hilarious, but nothing ever changes. Oh, they you, they let. La- oh, you thought like, change was coming from this? <laughs> no, I guess I'm just getting to a point that the comedians they have every year like end up smoking it from such an intelligent point of view and a comedic one. Roy Woods did and a great then, job. Let's let's, he, let's he highlight that first. Roy Woods, it. shout out to Roy Woods Jr. He did an amazing job at the White House Correspondents Dinner. Um, I thought the way he executed his jokes added real thing, and I like the fact that he didn't. He didn't come across like he was trying to pick a side. No, of he course wasn't not. trying to sound like he was a Democrat or Republican. He he threw shit at both. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was very well, very well executed, very well written. I love the fact that he paid tribute to his mother. Um, I thought it was a great job. I do too, and, and maybe this is just the grumpy side of me that watches this because I love when they do this every year. But it's almost like offensive that all these people are laughing at these jokes. Yeah. Because he's actually saying something of no. like the hypocrisy of but everything. The truth? How fucked up it is. <laughs> like Roy Woods is saying some shit. Yeah, here. No, I know it's truth. funny, but yeah. he's really saying some shit and yeah. everyone that's done these these dinners before. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we're talking to the people that should change it. And they're just like, ha, 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 ha never changing. <laughs> Another crook. Yeah. Another uh, crumpet, please. Uh, it's funny you noticed that. That's yeah. not going to change. He openly said, uh, which is incredible, how uh, billionaires can buy anything. Yeah, this whole bit set up and how Clarence Thomas was bought by Harlan Crow. And he was like, there's only two black Supreme Court justices. He goes, he owns half of the available, uh, like the black. It was just, it, he just laid into that, like the hypocrisy of all this shit. And then still, obviously, there's colorful, laughing, punching moments. But he did get really poignant, especially at the end, because his dad was a journalist. And he was saying journalism's heading towards a path where everything now that's worthwhile is getting put behind a paywall. Mm-hmm. And he's saying most people aren't willing to pay for it or be like, can't afford it. So now when you look at, He's addressing all these networks that are in the room with him. He was like, the civil rights movement started with local news. All of like these major stories that we Yeah, he was giving shout out to local journalists and yeah. you know, the importance that they play in a lot of these historical times in our country. Before anything's national news, it's local news was like his big point. And right. we're mm-hmm. eliminating that process of including local news by like eradicating it and pushing everything towards the entertainment side of news. So okay. it was really, oh, we're, it was we're really past, good. We're past that. And he's definitely correct and again i guess that's what's so heartbreaking about these entire things the people that he's talking to he's talking to directly in front of him and they're laughing and going hey, no we know it's not changing yeah like i remember you know what the biggest change that happened from one of these dinners is they pissed donald trump off enough to run for president and he did and yep. he won and he yep. won and then he refused to come back to one because <laughs> he didn't want to get made fun of he was, think, he was the butt of a joke at one of them that he would never be president. And he said, I'll show you. I want to see Donald Trump at like a roasting like this, though. Did. Uh, they did. did Comedy they? Central did. Yeah. I don't, was it the roast of Donald Trump or was he just on? Uh, yeah, there was the roast of Donald Trump. They did Trump. one yeah. of him, but he'll never, he's made it a point. He'll never go to a White House correspondent. He didn't go when he was president. He hasn't gone to the, like, he's not going. Maybe he don't he can't handle it. I, yeah, nah, he's too I sensitive. I don't think I don't I don't think that is because he can't handle it. I think it's he other can't reasons. handle it. He can't handle it. He's <laughs> the most sensitive human being on earth. I know it's your man's, but you have to. No, I'm not. That's your man. No, it's not that. I think that he. I don't think that he's sensitive. I just I think that it may be other reasons why he's not going to that dinner. There could be those too. I'm not saying because you, you can't do a roast. You can't do a roast on Comedy Central and say yo, he's sensitive. Like, but this was before. This was when Trump was like the cool 
who we thought billionaire. This is way before politics. He no, was just. He I, was I just a, think he don't. He was the apprentice guy. I just think he don't. I, I think that he feels like a lot of these people that will be in this room don't like him. Number one. Sure. And I feel like he's not going to be faking sitting there and, and 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 chum chum and laugh with them like y'all don't like me. Y'all don't even want me as the president. That can. That's. 100% true. He also is the most sensitive human being ever and would lose his shit sitting there. I want to see it. <laughs> he would never do it. That's great television. He's too, he's too sensitive. He said he didn't find the jokes at his expense any funny. That's pussy. I mean, That's tight pussy. I mean, oh, who, who was the comedian? Dude, come on. I'm just, who was the comedian? Sometimes jokes ain't funny. That's all I'm saying. Huh? Well, you think it should have been Larry the Cable Guy? That would have been a better who? for for Trump's audience? No. I don't, like, I don't think Larry Cable guy's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love these dinners. And this is me just being grumpy as fuck that it's getting almost offensive to the American people that these comedians are saying the truth in a funny way to the people that are doing it. And all they have to say is, ha ha, we know. <laughs> uh, Nothing's going to change. So one of your redhead brethren, uh, Rory, uh, we spoke mm-hmm. about him on the last episode about uh, being... Taking a court in in hot water with hot water with the gay with the gays it's an awfully hot coffee pot yeah uh, he's in hot water with the gays uh, over a song that he is alleged to be stealing uh, chords and melodies from Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye wait the gays are upset you said well no. oh not I really I'm sorry See, and I just Mar- I wasn't clarify, even Marvin Gaye I just want to that clarify, was me just being stupid we were wrong about that um it's not marvin gaye's estate that's suing him it's the estate of the co-writer on the song that are suing him also good for him man if you co-wrote that song yeah yeah and so I'll, his pay the writers we were talking about that in the last episode and as soon as we finished i totally remembered seeing a video of ed sheeran performing um his record um and then <laughs> going into yeah, it's weird how it blended so well. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Which is what sparked the lawsuit, by the way. I they believe said that video was what. As soon as we record, I was like, wait a minute. I think I remember seeing Ed Sheeran yeah. playing that record. Eddie, no more mashups, man. And then yeah. play your record. Yeah, like he's playing Thinking Out Loud, and then he goes into Let's Get It On. And of course, the crowd. Without goes crazy. a single like, chord change. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> yeah, he might lose this one. He fucked himself up like, <laughs> like that. You, you shot, Ed, Ed, you shot yourself in the foot with that. It's oh, Ed geez. Sheeran and G Depp, right? Yeah. And G Depp. Ed, you shot yourself in the foot. But he uh, said he's quitting music if he loses his case. 50 said the same thing when he lost to Kanye. First, we got we got a first week sales. Two years later. <laughs> No one really quits music. Nobody quits. You quit when you've realized that they're no longer showing up to see you and they're no longer buying your fucking product. That's when you quit. Well, that, but not- this, is a, this is a weird quote, too. Yeah. If that happens, I'm done. I'm stopping. I find it really insulting to devote my whole life to being a performer and a songwriter and have someone diminish it. No one's diminishing what you're doing. They're suggesting that you borrowed from them and they need to be paid and compensated for it. Like... That's a and that you that's were a really aware, arrogant fucking quote. You were aware that you borrowed this. You know you did it. You don't. See, you don't think it's insulting? I'd imagine if Ed Sheeran, let's say, let's get it on, never existed, and Thinking Out Loud was a completely original piece, and twenty years down the line, someone took those exact same chords and made a hit. You don't think Ed would feel insulted? Yeah. <laughs> Again, do you I, even feel I, like that would diminish his artistry if someone just took from him and didn't credit him? No, I understand I understand both sides. I understand as a writer, you know, you're hearing this thinking out loud record and you're like, hmm, sounds very familiar to something that I wrote called Let's Get It On. <laughs> just, a, just a little number. Just a little tune. tune I came up with, you know, one night. You uh, may or may not know it. Yeah, you may, you may or may <laughs> not know it. But I do understand the other side of that as well of Ed, you know, saying I don't want people to d- d- diminish word, right? I don't want people to feel like I stole something or because that's not what I would happen. Again, we understand how subconsciously we'll hear melodies when you're creating something and not even realize like, oh shit, that's let's get it on. Now, it's hard to, in the court of law, if I play that same YouTube video with Ed playing Thinking Out Loud and then going into let's get it on and I'm yeah, like, that's, Your that's Honor, hard. He, he that's really tough on the case. Right? It's his DJ brain. Right. Oh, but but it's like, you know, I can understand if Ed is saying, scissor hands on the if Ed is saying like, yo, I didn't steal that. That's not what I want. It does sound like it. I can see how, you know, it, it mashes and blends well, but I didn't take from that. Edward Scissorshand wouldn't be a good uh, DJ name for him. I'm sure that exists somehow. We, uh, no, that's that not wouldn't. bad. Fair. We speculated that it would be a similar 
lawsuit to the blurred lines ones, but this one is allegedly worth a hundred million dollars. God not, damn! Not five. So this would be a much larger hit. Towards uh, well, I, Ed I, is right then. If he does lose, he ain't got no choice but to quit. Yeah, he, no, he's got to no, make some fucking a, new songs. Well, I was gonna say, pump some shit nah, out. Nah, man, it's, it's 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 it, tough, man. I understand it on both sides. It, it it's tough, but Ed, I'm not gonna lie. That video of you going into that mashup mm-hmm. to let's get it, it on sounded that, great. It, did it, it was great. amazing. Expensive video, it, amazing. It cost hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna cost you, buddy. Speaking of expensive well, videos, how do you feel about Frank Ocean? Um, and his team suing the, sh- the pants off a fan. The they're pants. not suing. They're issuing CNDs, oh, which means C&D. take yeah. down that fucking video or we'll sue the pants off you. Yes. Um, I mean, I don't know what the stipulations... I felt like Coachella would own that footage before Frank Ocean would. Mm-hmm. Just for clarity, a fan took a compilation of videos from Frank's set during Coachella, mashed them all together, put it on YouTube. Frank's pissed about it because now his set is available for everyone to watch. Yeah, Frank, I don't know if you know how these festivals work, but people come in there with cameras. Uh, <laughs> in their phone. Phones. Yeah, a phone. Phones. And uh, if they decide to record you while you're performing and make a video for their own social media platforms. I think it's funny because Frank has sung on Novocaine about going to Coachella as a fan. Like Frank, he, I, probably, he probably took a camera out. I, I credit Frank for even making Coachella popular because a lot of people did not know what Coachella was before Frank Ocean said that. I'm I'm standing okay, on that. Okay, I know that's an I'm insane that. take. I'm I'm standing on that. A Ice lot of blue people bong. A lot a, a lot of people did went not know and yeah. definitely did have did not go to Coachella before Frank Ocean. Said and that. I was found that line weird. Did Jay Z perform at Coachella like years and years ago? I don't know. I could see that. Because she went to go happening. see some. Went to go see Z Trip. There you he go. went to go see Jay. I want to see if that's accurate. So yeah, 2010. 2010, and that's when nostalgia came out. Yeah. Oh wow. Like I, living his living his rhymes. Like I said, a lot of people did not know what Coachella was, and a lot of people definitely did not have not attended Coachella before yep. Frank Ocean. Well, trip was also like Coachella started advertising more to a more urban audience. Yeah, in so, around so did Frank well. Ocean. But also, I mean, Jay Z did perform. But I, I'm I, I get what you're saying. No, Frank it, Ocean made it. Uh, he made it popular. He made it more. Not saying that Coachella wasn't popular. Mm-hmm. But Fan Frank Jay-Z Ocean, right, yeah, <laughs> Frank Ocean definitely put Coachella in the ears and on, on the minds of a lot of people that had no idea what that shit was. That's true. That's whoever yeah, whoever that's true. this kid is should get hired, though. He downloaded 450 videos from over 300 people, condensed it over 80 hours of footage to create this video. So I hope he gets a job from this. He also needs a girlfriend, but other than that, I think that is very <laughs> like I think that's great and talented. And Why does he need a girlfriend? He's it. he's that's a good. That's good what he did. Like it wasn't like he was just doing some bored shit. I'm like, not shitting on hard work, even though I'm a bare minimum boy. I'm just saying it's gang. like the amount of <laughs> that's a that's a lot. It's <laughs> a lot of footage. Like, <laughs> that's a lot of footage. Cut, right, Edit? Right around. Yomi, yes, a lot of footage. A lot of footage. It's a lot of footage. Like go I, go to Cheesecake Factory with your cheesecake. significant other for a second. I feel like it's a good investment because I'm sure that that YouTube video was gonna hit before that C and D. Not only that, it's a good investment because somebody's gonna hire he, this dude. But I fuck with this <laughs> As they guy. Should. He said he's this not is a fucking worker. He's yeah. not planning on monetizing. I really fuck with this dude. He's like, I'm not making a penny off this. I'll continue to upload it's for the art. Yeah, he, and he said all also the videos practice. I ripped are public domain. He's yeah. not doing anything. Like he didn't finesse anyone. Oh, if he's not monetizing off of it, they should definitely should. Well, you can't. The C&D. You can't you monetize can't. off of it. I, I fuck with you, Brian. I like it. Yeah. Listen, this is that old school type of shit, man. Go to an event, get footage. Put out your own shit, make Bootleg it dope, it. cut it up. You know what I mean? Make dope edits to it, put it out. Dope Somebody edits. gonna see that and be like, "Yo, I like this dude's work. Let's hire him." And I mean, we watched the Firefest doc where so much of that footage ended up being the phone footage from, mm-hmm. from random people. Mm-hmm. If this guy, whether he owns the footage or not, obviously at least sourced it all, hire him just to yeah, run to catalog it. Yeah, because I feel like Archives. there is gonna be a Frank Coachella doc. Within the next five years, yeah, like and and, and I, see, I just I just like shit I like think there will be. I like shit like instead of Frank Ocean sending a cease and desist, why not reach out to that dude and hire him? For what though? Frank's not working on anything. No, he's you Frank okay. Frank Ocean needs a camera following him, even if he's not working. On it. He does. His doctor, I'm sure he does. I'm he has sure, a jewelry line. I'm sure uh, yeah. Frank Ocean has a lot of things. I'm sure he's doing. But what I'm saying is a guy like that, instead of sending a cease and desist, it's like yo, get in touch with that kid. Like, let's see if we can put him somewhere, you know, bring him around, have him just film shit day to day, put some dope shit together. Well, he start. might suck at filming. Yeah, he could yeah, be he trash at filming. We don't know that. Editing. 
He's a great editor. We know. Do we that. know that though, or is he a good organizer? Like maybe he should do an admin. What I'm saying is, I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the edit. Like the is it kid, a good edit? I mean, it's enough to get a lawsuit. It's enough to get because he hit attention. download four hundred times. That's a. This that's is what Ed Sheeran is saying. You diminishing. You diminishing Brian's work. You don't even see his work and look at you. Can he edit? I'm a hater. This? I'm yes. the face of hatred. Just you're like diminishing. You. You you're diminishing his work. You're I need to see the edit. He all right. He's good at downloading four hundred fifty videos. It doesn't mean he's good at putting them together. Obviously, Frank said the cease and desist. After downloading 450, I would hope so. Yeah, like, yo, fam, nah. But that's what I'm saying. Give the kid a job. How are the transitions? Congrats to Brent Fias. Um, We already knew he was going to turn down every major deal opportunity. He's been pitched those for God knows how many years. Um, But did a deal with United Masters that's rumored to be worth over $50 million. Rumors. Stays independent. Shout out to Ty. Shout out to Brent. Um, As much as this is news, if you followed Brent in his career. It's not news. <laughs> he he's he stood on this that he is never going to to play that game. Um, he was fucking with STEM for a while. Shout out to STEM. He was printing money at STEM. Mm-hmm. Um, Brent has always said. Ty has always said they're gonna stay independent. That's so, dope. So uh, shout out to Brent, man. Shout out to the whole team. Uh, I've always been vocal about Brent being one of my favorite artists. Love the way he moves on, on his own. You know, he doesn't follow trends and fads and shit like that. He does his own shit. He's in his own lane. You don't really hear him about him in headlines too much. And no bullshit. Um, you very rarely see him anywhere. Mm. Um, I just I just like the way he moves. Very low and just, you know, in his own little zone. So shout out to Brent. Major deal. Love the independent wave. Um, create your own narratives. Uh, do shit your way. Build your own team. Um, shout out to United Masters yep. partner, for, for, for partnering with uh, Brent and his team. And again, I mean, the, the independent thing obviously is not a new narrative by any means, but a deal to the magnitude of fifty million dollars, and you still own your masters, and your masters are Fire. at the value of what Brents are. Fire. This is a, a really, really big deal. Um, I know majors will pretend they don't give a fuck because no matter what, they will exist. But if you're they a, want, if they you, want it Brent, <laughs> if you're a young artist watching this now to to watch Brent's blueprint, yeah, this is a this is a really, really, really big deal. I think this is just what happens when number one, you put out great product mm-hmm. as Brent has always done. Um, and just build the right team, have the right people around you. All on the same page, all the same goal, all right. the same understanding. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this. I, I wish we could do a, a crazy deep dive on it, but we've been following Brent's career for quite some time. And mm-hmm. this this was always the plan, and he's been vocal about it. <laughs> yeah. Congrats so, to that to the entire team, man. That's big. Um, also, Dirk and Cole put out. I don't know. Is this a, is this TikTok, Damaris? Would this be considered a TikTok? I'm pretty sure. If you hold your so. phone up now, is that a TikTok? J Cole's on TikTok. He's got to be. I no don't way. Think so. No. Cole's he has a fin- he has a finsta. No way. J Cole is on TikTok. <laughs> you don't think Cole is a finsta? Nah. On TikTok? Hell no. Cole def- he has kids. You can't have a finsta. You can't have a finsta and then still ride your bike through Manhattan. Like I, don't J. Think I actually think that's the that's that's the finsta vibes. Nah, man. I think his bike is the finsta car. True. Yeah, Cole. Cole, Cole is in the, uh, nah. I would be surprised if J. Cole had a, had a uh, TikTok. I would be very surprised. Why? Jay-Z Cole has, has a, one? You know every one of these artists. Jay-Z has a TikTok? Uh, I'm sure Jay-Z J. has a TikTok. J. Cole has a TikTok. TikTok. No, he doesn't. See, see, you see how quickly that changed? Jay-Z has one. Cole Jay-Z has one? I'm sure. No. You Does Jay-Z have a TikTok? You think Jay-Z has a TikTok? Well, Why do you even, think even he doesn't? Even if he does, he doesn't Fuck run no, it. no, man. Why do you... Wow. TikTok? No. Maul, you act like Cole's posting on this. Someone's doing it for him. But he I'm does talking about a, a we're talking about fake TikToks, like a Finsta, like one you just every get to last see what's going one on. of these artists, including Jay Z and Beyonce, have fake Instagram, fake, fake Twitter, Twitter, fake TikToks. They see all your shit. No, I'm not saying they don't see it, but I don't I don't know if they have a fake. T- I don't know if Jay Z has a fake TikTok. I can't buy into that just shit. Do you believe he has Elliot, a fake? Elliot texted me one time and said, Oh, Jay's fin- uh he didn't say Finsta, but he said Jay's fake page liked your shit. I went through my my entire likes to find it. You cause you know Jay has a fake Twitter. Like that's no hundred percent. Well, he has a he he knows the guy that created Twitter. <laughs> they just had lunch. <laughs> They're like, that's different. They're in business together. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok, so you know he has a fake Elon Musk, Insta. Right? You know he has a fake Twitter. Why I just would don't, you think I that he does have a fake TikTok? I just can't see, I just can't see him be, having a fake TikTok. I just can't see it. Twitter, I understand. Uh, I, I'm going to get on my Julian vibes. I bet in the studio with J. Cole. He oh, is so gosh. internet fucking savvy Woo. and pays attention to fucking everything. It's There's true. no way in hell he does not have a TikTok. He is. Like, like not that. even a little bit. He is on the internet more than any of us. He's like, Maul, the way we know Drake is, Drake Cole's on the same level of involved and in, in tapped in. He just does it with Drake. culture. He just doesn't comment on it. 
That's racist. No, he has Is dreads. It? I'm looking at the video. No, we call said, them locks. We don't said, call them dreads anymore. They're called locks. With dreads. Well, yeah, they have the same thing. Just one has braids and one. What does the hair have to do with it? They're, that's just black. the difference. It's because he's black. It's because he's black. It's because he's black. He's they're both, they're both from TikTok. Forest Hills neighborhoods. And There's a both, lot of similarities. They're both biracial, right? Yeah. Mm. See the power in being biracial? What's the power? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, give it to me. Come on. Tell I'm me just more. Saying, it just helps. It's, it's just so helps. you say the industry um, pushes them because they're biracial? That's what you're saying? I'm just saying you get a demographic from both. You get the, the black demographic and the white demographic. They were saying that about ice So pretty much Logic's career. Yeah, there were a lot of colorism, colorism uh, comments about Ice Spice going to the Met Gala. Being at the Met Gala. Why? They were like, only someone that looks like this would get approval from Anna Wintour, like push through this whole thing and put on the carpet. Or only somebody that has a relationship with Kim Kardashian is now the face of the new Skims line would get invited to it. No, we're not. When you're doing TikToks with North and North is at the gala and North (laughs) wants her favorite artist there. No, you're looking too deep, Maul. We're just looking at the racism. Oh, so just stay right yeah. there. No, no right. I think Maul's looking at the facts. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, sometimes the facts okay. don't matter. People want to just be. Mm, but if, I'm not if, saying that there's not colorism. I was going to say, if we saying that that colorism of course doesn't it's exist in that, because the dark skin girl could never soar the way that fucking Ice Spice did off having de- zero to no talent. Look it's at not, Lil Nas X. not going to happen. Well, so wait, 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 hold on. Now Ice Spice has no talent. <sighs> That's now. <laughs> I've been saying. All right, uh, whatever. No, nah, go ahead. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How do we fall into this? Ice Spice has no talent? You think Ice Spice is a talented rapper? Oh. I think she's a talented you person. Think, you think- I, I wouldn't <laughs> rap wouldn't be it, but there's a talent there. Okay. Here comes what the would, hate. What would this? No, wait. So you can say I have Cardi. You this- can say that Cardi was pushed, but I'm crazy for saying Ice Spice is being pushed. You don't I'm, think I'm, I, you I'm don't think Ice Spice, Spice is a de- masterclass in marketing? You don't she's think that de- girl knows exactly how to market herself? She's definitely being. She pushed. knows how to market herself, or the people behind her know how to market her. You give her no credit. Can I ask you what's the difference between obviously looking the years down the line, Cardi is who she is, but what's the difference in the way Ice Spice is starting? In the way Cardi started, because uh, there's a huge difference. Yeah. Well, well, one one isn't on a reality show. Okay. Right. We understand that. Cardi has been entertaining to watch perform and rap since the very beginning. She's always been entertaining. Ice Spice is not entertaining. So you know Ice about Spice you know about you know, well, you know about you know about Cardi before she was on Love and Hip Hop. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. You was going to the strip clubs to to. to I've check seen out? her in strip clubs. I used to be in the strip clubs. I saw seen, her early work. Yes, Cardi used to be in Lust. We saw her demo tape at Sue's. Yo, Damaris be capping, though. I'm capping? I, yeah. Well, she's, a, I, I don't know. She's a, a strip club goer. She may have. I, I just want to know, what's the difference in them pushing Ice Spice and the way they pushed Cardi B? They, this is obviously no, the I'm new not, one. I'm the one that pointed out that similarity to you. Because no, you when said, I said she's said not Spice talented, when I said I don't find her talented, you were like, she's not talented? And I'm like, so you don't believe that they can push Ice Spice, but you believe they can push Cardi? No, I... I believe that they pushing Ice Spice. Okay, of course they are. Exactly. I'm saying though, why do you say that she has no talent? What's her talent? Her She's personality. Making songs. Her personality. You don't think there's she talent? Makes, she in... makes good songs. Like yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll agree to disagree. You don't fuck with her music. No. What's the name of her EP? Like, like. You don't think that took? <laughs> you gotta do like this though. Like you gotta t- tilt your head. Like, like. Yeah. You don't think that took talent to make those songs? Because from my understanding, she talent, right? she does write all her shit by herself. Okay. Oh, that's more than Cardi. And- I'm not saying that fucking uh, my baddie friend is a cannabis lyric, but it clearly works. Cannabis. And there is some talent to know how to make those records. She does, in fact, write all her own shit. I mean, I to wouldn't say Ice Spice is not talented and the way she's you branded herself is crazy. You know why Demaris is saying that. You know why she's saying Because she's ginger. Because Nikki <laughs> snatched up Ice Spice and supported her and, <laughs> and then Demaris <laughs> is a car of hate. Demaris, Demaris is a Cardi Y'all B. Y'all making me seem like, like I'm hating on Ice Spice and you I'm are, not you hating. Are, you are. You are hating. She writes her own shit. That's talent. He's a Cardi hater. You're Ice Spice hater. I love everybody. Hold on. Wait a minute because I've been on record supporting Ice Spice when y'all were sitting up there saying that North shouldn't be around her, and I said y'all are tripping. I still, I still That's a parenting that. thing. Yeah, That's not I a music thing. Anyway, music I support thing. Ice Spice, and I want her to go as far as she possibly no, you can. My, you didn't want her to go to the match. You didn't want her. Yeah, you wanted no, to go to Anna. Said, That's you not what I said. You want to go down, y'all tried to, when downtown. he brought up colorism. Y'all tried to overlook the colorism, and what I said was a uh, dark skin. If she was dark skin, she would not be as big as she is. That's what I said. That's well, not no, taking I, anything I, I away from her. I don't think that. I think that the fact that uh, stop making points I can't refute. No, I think. That, <laughs> I, think I think the fact that what really helped Ice Spice is the fact that Kim Kardashian basically, you know, took. Her she in. wouldn't have 
gotten into Kim Kardashian's house if she was a dark skinned girl because she we wouldn't have nah. gotten as big. They only let black people in the house. <laughs> big, big, big dark skin vibes. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. What else? Jokey, jokey, what, kitty, kitty. No, but y'all get my I, you, All right, point. you could be right. I'm no, not going to say there's not colorism in, in hip hop, especially with I'm female not, rappers. I'm not, but I'm not going to agree with that though because I think the, the whole, the whole point, the whole thing, uh, what I can remember, is that North loves Ice Spice. And, and 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 North wouldn't have known who Ice Spice was because Ice Spice is with her talent that she has would not be as big as she got for North to even see her and become a fan of her if she was dark skinned. You're just talking. That but is that, the this point. is all hypothetical. Is it? I'm not saying you're probably right. I'm not saying, I'm not saying not colorism true. doesn't exist. We all know colorism exists, but I'm just saying that Ice Spice is obviously the one that the, the, the industry is pushing right now that they're getting behind. But a lot of it had a lot of her being invited to the Met is the fact that. Kim kind of took her in and she is like the face of the new Skims line and all of that. So, Can two things be true? Colorism 1000% exists in every single industry, but Ice Spice also has some type of talent and is here because she's talented. And if she was dark skin, oh, okay. Can, and if can she two was things be true? She wouldn't be as talented. She wouldn't get, she, she wouldn't, wouldn't get those you can't be media. I mean, you can't be mediocre if you're dark skin, if you're a brown skin woman in the industry, I, you can't I, be mediocre. I agree. That's my point. I didn't say Ice Spice didn't deserve to be there. I'm saying when he brought up colorism, she she that colorism talented, has an effect. You said that's, she wasn't talented. That's what I was arguing. I didn't disagree that because she's light skinned. You, said she, you helpful, said she wasn't talented. Compared to the rest of the female rappers that are rapping right now, no, I don't think that she can sit with them, but she's the one that they're pushing right now. She and I love that songs. for her because I want her to be as talented to make it as far as she can. Her. I do. I push for women of color, but let's just be honest. You don't like any of her songs? Just not that color. No, I'm, I've heard some of them and they're cool, but you they're don't not like. any of them? It's a ginger thing or is it a. What is it? All right, y'all. Oh, you feel, you feel, like y'all know the fuck I'm like, talking about. <laughs> you feeling some like? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's okay. never said this about any Met other Gala, female rapper. She looked great, yeah. pretty girl, okay. nice gowns, beautiful gowns. She looked great, beautiful gowns. No, no, no. She didn't. Bears is hate is. Yeah, nuts. she hate. Did I'll you bite your shit. red hair from her? Yeah, like, and you got the red bun. Come on, you supposed to be riding with her a little yeah. more than that. You de spice. Yeah, de spice. You in the spice? Y'all trying to make me seem like I'm a spice hater because you in the spice cabinet right now. You both rocking red hair. Because I to him bringing up spice right now. You cha spice. You vanilla cha. Shout out to and she didn't look good at the Met. I didn't like that dress. It was it was a little too. No, I didn't want to say that because then I'd have been a hater. But no, what's wrong with that? The arm it just doesn't fit. The arms too much room in the arms. Like got a little. It wasn't. She did say it was last minute. You know, it was it was last minute. You can see it. It's just not. It's Um, not fitted all the way right. I wish she wore her signature hair. I don't like that they keep doing this for specific events where they put like the the lay down. Just let her rock the. The Annie. The look. That's the look. Back alley. You got to straighten your hair. You can't come in with your ethnic hair. You got to straighten it. Mm, Speak to it, baby D. Speak to it now. She could have done whatever she wanted. I'm just saying, I, I this do is recognize the match. she could not have done whatever she wanted. Yeah, no, wait, let's be. Let's no, I'm talking about, about with her hair, with her hair. She could have worn her hair off. I just, I, I listen. Jared man. Leto walked in with a cat costume. Yeah. Here's Jared Leto. Fuck that. She's from the Bronx, man. I'm rooting for Ice Spice. I don't give a fuck. Just not Cardi from the Bronx. I'm rooting for Cardi too. You crazy? Anybody from the Bronx, I'm rooting for. I always say that. Um, all right, well, we got off track. This J. Cole and Dirk song <laughs> appears that, that it's coming out soon. They shot a video with a bunch of kids. It sounds like kids on the hook, it sounds like an uplifting. Um, children, we are the world. I saw an ice cream truck in the background, so you, you know what that means. Free cones, big, big pedal vibes. No, damn, stop putting that on everybody's jacket. Father O'Malley really, really, yeah, really ruined yeah, you. Yeah, he's like, tripping. That's how he used to get you. No. Like, go out there and get you a uh, that's why uh, you no, my mother was a diabetic. That's why like you don't like sweets. <laughs> that's no, why you don't. Yeah. That's the real reason. It has nothing to do with your mom, it has to do with him offering you ice cream. Nah. Clock I, that tea. Damn, you thought I gave it up that easy just for ice cream? <laughs> kind of, yeah. For vanilla cone. For vanilla cone. I didn't really like Look at you. You, you had sprinkles, huh? Oh, you had to get to know me. <laughs> you had sprinkles? <laughs> you used to, Father O'Malley used to put sprinkles on it for you. <laughs> the rainbow ones, too. <laughs> oh, look at him. He's being progressive. Oh, man. Uh, Beast Mode 3 uh, is coming Friday. Was well, out now, if you're listening to this. Mm. Uh, Zaytoven and Future are back in the studio. Well, they, they're, they're out of the studio now. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were in the studio. Beast Mode 3. Were you in the studio, too? No, I was Stood not. Too. I, 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 I haven't heard it yet, obviously, because we were, we recorded before it came out. But I am interested to hear what they came up with, though. All right. How many money bags you? you you expected to give? What you expected to serve? Gross. Well, five money I, men, men only get three money bags. Yeah. That's, that's the most they can get. I'm hoping I can give it three. Mm. Anytime Zaytoven Future, you know, they, they put some joints together. We get some classic mu- music out of it. So hopefully they gave us another another. Um, I don't I, I doubt the entire project is a classic. I don't know when the last time I heard a full project that I thought was a classic. You get some classic records, but not a full classic project. The last time you heard a classic project, a project that you thought was a classic. The last classic project? 2018. Yeah. Invasion of Privacy, for sure. For me. For me. For me. Just for me. 
Damn. Rap album of the year. We get so much music now, man. I can't really. It's like every week shit is coming out. Like just, I don't I can't even remember. The last full project. God did? I'll come back to that. I got to think about that. Okay. Yeah, you, I'll you ask like you God again. did maybe what? I'll ask you God again did? on Monday. No, God did is not a classic. God didn't do anything. God did not. Do y'all believe in Why the they term? put that on God's jacket? <laughs> Why yeah, they put that real. album on God's jacket? Do you guys believe in the term instant classic? I had an argument with our friend Lo over Hooper. Hey, Loki. And he you? said Shocker. that insta instant classics do not exist. Because I was arguing that Take Care was an instant classic. And he said, I don't think instant classics What exist. qualifies as an instant classic? Like as soon as you hear it, you Good like, Kid Mad City was an instant classic. 100%. I said that one too. A go- in an instant classic for me, there's one thing that you, you album can grow and become a classic. Instant Classic is an album that has a strong narrative line that carries throughout. And there's a mm-hmm. theme that starts when you hear that tape record play and then it closes at the end on Good Kid, Mad City. That is yeah. a beautifully wrapped story. You can digest it in the story that it's meant to be heard and deduce that this is a classic. Same and thing with Mad, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. That was the same classic. thing for me for Damn. I, th- I think that also was an instant classic. Yeah. Yeah. People Damn? knew when yeah. they heard it. You thought Damn was an instant classic? Yes. The Recording Academy didn't. I know. <laughs> they, they thought Invasion of Privacy was. Uh, damn, I'm not mad at calling a classic. To me, it wasn't an instant classic. It took me a while. I loved Damn when it first came out, but it did take me a while to even think about the classic shit. Mm-hmm. My bias, I know I'm a dick writer. 444 to me was an instant classic. That doesn't make you a dick writer. Anytime I talk about you. I listened to it a couple of days ago. I was just at my apartment. And I let it rock. Inst- to it's, me, it's an instant classic. It's, like, it's so quick and it's really it's good. Perfect. It gets, it gets better like when you the you years go times? by. Yeah. yeah. Like I had listened to it maybe like half a year after it came out. And I think I called my homeboy and was like, Y'all was wrong about this album. <laughs> you popped a lot this, of shit. This is a really good album. But like, that was a it's perfect. Really, yeah. That, that's so a, you guys believe in instant classics. You believe that you can hear an album and know that this music is gonna it's age fun, well. It's it's no see, it's tough with music because again, a lot of the times with music, it depends on where you're at in your life when you hear it. Yeah, true. Because music should serve as a timestamp in your life. Like, it's certain albums yeah. that I hear, and I remember exactly the year it came out, what I was doing, what was happening. Who you was fucking. Who I was fucking with, shit like that. It, so, it's it all depends. Like, it, you know, certain music just speaks to you differently at certain times. So, again, music is always going to be subjective to the person that's listening to it. But there are certain albums where I think you can say, as soon as you hear it, like, this sounds really good. Like, this is a really dope project. I think it becomes, I think I understand what Lo was saying because I think the classic terms comes when time has passed and you listen to it again and you're like, this shit still sounds good. Like it doesn't sound dated. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound old. It doesn't sound like, you know, like it's it's, it's so far removed from what's happening right now, which is why albums like 444, when I listened to it after a few months after it came out, I had to really stop because even the, even the, the, the songs, like, Going from one, Kill Jay-Z, Story of OJ, like, when you just let it play, it was almost like turning a page. That's the only way I listen to this album, because it's so short. It's 36 yeah, minutes. Exactly. Yeah. It's short, and it's just like, damn, as soon as one song goes off, it goes right back into the next one. Dope record. Dope record. Bars. Like, hook is crazy. So it's just like, but when it came out, I just think at the time, it was just such a different Jay-Z that it kind of was like, it just took a little couple months to really sit on the pallet. Like, okay, this is dope. I'm trying to think. Of albums, though, that I thought were instant classics that weren't later on, though. Because I feel what Lowe is saying. Mm. It can't be a classic if it, if it takes some time. That, that's what makes something a classic. I know. I, could, but I can't movies, think of a song that... Uh, I, could, I could name movies all day that I thought was an instant classic. Like? I thought Belly was an instant classic. It is. No, it's not. Belly is a classic. Belly is terrible. It's one of the best shot <laughs> movies ever. It just has no storyline. So it's terrible. <laughs> Don't tell me about the cinematography it could be a great. Shit. It could be a great film and a bad movie. What does that mean? Mm. The way that, like he said, the way that it was shot. Was shot still one of the best, which shot is very ever. important. But this plot just sucks. It's no, a bad movie. No, go yeah, back but to for the a classic. Film a classic has to be movie. ten out of ten on every. Yeah, you talking about classic? Belly. I thought Belly was a classic when that shit came out. I looked at that shit a few years ago. I said, "This is a bad fucking movie." Insidious and the genre one and two are classic. Though. Scarface oh, thought it was a classic. Horrible movie. When I was a kid, I was like, "Ooh." I get why people. But like it was it. good for that, that time frame. That? That That's though? true. It was good for that time. Like Get Rich, I knew was an instant classic as a fourteen year old. What? It's never changed. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Get Rich is game good. documentary. Still think it's a classic. I thought that was an instant now, classic. I, I, Blueprint. Oh, I thought. Hold on. I mean, now, not, hold on. It, it was a weird day. Hold on. But, get Rich or Die Trying. <laughs> classic. But even now to this day, and when it first came out, I never liked that PIMP record. 
Word? Oh, oh I think I wish they would have no. deleted that off that album. Can't get it down. I hate it, that it was record. it was single chasing, but it worked. I hate it, it, was it, it breaks it chasing. breaks the mold enough on that scope of that album that it's fun. If like, you was to show me that too if much was, kill gangster shit. If like. you was to play that record and then not pl- and then and then play the album and be like, yo, you know this song is on that album, I'd be like, no fucking yeah, way. I agree <laughs> with you. It, it, but where they placed it, it somehow worked. I, I I did not like that record. The video helped with the I think it was oh, like skit. It was like they made PIMP work. I agree with you. It's a weird song, especially in the scope. Oh, of the album. also since we're still back. Well, if that's the case, I feel that way about Wankster. Si- wait, since we're back on this album, well, Wankster was like a was bonus. I don't even think it was on the album. Yeah, Wankster was, was so it was years before. Yeah, Rich. Wankster came out years before that. Yeah, it was a bonus track. While we're on this album, this lost to Speaker Box Love Below in the Grammys for the best album, not uh, College Dropout. College Dropout was the following year. Oh, okay. Quick edit. I mean, well, Speaker Box Love Below was classic. Well, while, while we're recording this, 50 has a countdown right now on his Instagram for yeah. the 20th anniversary of Get Richard I Trying. Wow. We have no idea what it is, so by the in time you're years? hearing this, fuck. Yeah, it's crazy, I right? think Ghost gonna come back. Ghost? What? What do you mean? Ghost? What? On power? power. Ghost gonna come back alive? <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> that's what he's doing for the twentieth anniversary? No, it's bringing t- Ghost back from the dead. Let me tell you, his something. name is Ghost. No, 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 his no, name no, is Ghost no, 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 for no. a reason. Let me tell all of y'all something right now. <laughs> it's Shakespearean. He's 50, been Ghost the whole time. Fifty's gonna want to kill it's me if he sense. does that. Because when I'm gonna come on here and say about that, he better not. Nigga, leave his that. His name nigga. is Ghost for a reason. You're not even putting a. No, no, no. I don't gotta do the thinking. There's no math. That shit where it's at. Nobody ain't trying to see that, bro. His name is Ghost. That I has like nothing to, that has it's nothing like to, the sixth sense when they did uh, Bruce you. Willis was dead the whole time. Spoiler. That has nothing to do with Get Richard Die Trying, is all I'm saying. Yes, it don't, does. Don't try to tie that in. We don't want to see that shit. He's rapping from the perspective of Ghost on Ooh. this album. Way before Power even came out. Damn. <laughs> Damn. And his first album was called Power of a Dollar. So yeah. you didn't even know. It didn't come out. He had to, he had to make change. <laughs> you didn't even know. <laughs> he had to make change. <laughs> he had to change in order for yeah. it. Oh, I'll get it. All right, that's a good he way to He had to cut that man. dollar in half. No, I get it. I get it. He's make 50. 50 cent? Yeah, I get it. The, the power he had dollar. to make change. Yeah, no, I get it. Right. And then he went back to power. They should put Rory in the writer's room. <laughs> No, they no, they should. Should. No, they should leave Rory right where you Whatever they want. Yo, y'all gonna respect my Whatever they want to pay the new writers, <laughs> yo, pay Rory. <laughs> you sound like a disgruntled rapper. Like, yo, y'all gonna just y'all gonna respect my pen one of these days. One of these fucking days. Uh Billy McFarlane. Did we say that Billy McFarlane and, and wants to fight Ja Rule? I think you are behind this. I think you are the reason that uh Billy wants to fight Ja Rule. He says mm. he wants to fight Ja Rule for $350,000 to pay back the people of the Bahamas uh from the Fire Festival. I think they should do it. I mean, is this honorable of Billy, even though he skated on all that money for so long? I mean, he's trying to come back as like the moral guy. I mean, uh, you got to respect it. Listen, uh, we always talk about Billy just he had a great idea. It's just that the execution and the planning just fell on his face. I don't think that he meant to scam people out of money. I think that he came up with an idea to do something and just didn't cross all of his T's and dot all of his I's. And I like the fact that now he's leaning into it like, yo, you know what? To pay the people back, to make things right. Me and Josh a box. All right. Billy, I don't know what you were doing on the yard. Mm. I mean, I respect it. You, you, you did your, your time. Ten ja down. punch that face. In. <laughs> Billy no, going to ja, <laughs> it will fucking destroy you. Ja going to beat the shit out of Billy. Y'all ja can say what you want about Ja Rule. I know he did the melodies. He was singing all that. He's soft. The whole Classics. 50 cent beef. Classics. Ja Rule. Look, which camera are we in? First one. Ja Rule can fight. I'm just letting y'all know that now. Ja can fight for real. And if they don't think he can, let's let's find out. I'd love to find out. I don't I think people know that Ja Rule can really fight. No, I mean, well, people don't, people are just not educated on certain things, which is fine. <laughs> but take the 350,000 really? and show it's them cool. that you can. It's gonna take more than 350,000. The funny oh, yeah. thing about this is no matter what, say Billy went or whatever the money, there's no way Billy's giving that money back to the staff in the Bahamas. Of course He'd not. He'd put that into another scheme. That not a dime that's of gonna that fun, would not that's go gonna to the Bahamas. That's going to fund Five Festival too. Yeah. 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 That's going to cover the catering. Like, hey, look, we're not going to give you this money. It's we're a gonna parlay. Hire, we're going to hire you again. <laughs> we're going to hire you again. <laughs> we're going to hire you again to work the Five Festival too, and this time we're going to pay you. Oh, my God. I love it, though. Listen, man, make it happen. Why not? It's all entertainment at the end of the day. It's supposed to be a party, a festival. Let them two fight and box at the festival and call it even Stevens. Um, but I don't know if that's like, I don't feel like Ja went on some type of smear campaign to Billy when he was in jail. Like, Ja took his his shit and kept yeah. quiet. Yeah, no. Nah, this time. I don't think, like I said, that, I think this is all entertainment. I don't think Billy McFarlane wants to fight Ja Rule. But we I saw that one to- that one headline of, of him saying Ja would never be involved in Firefest. Like, why? You were the problem in Firefest, not Ja Rule. 
Again, I think that that's just them talking shit. I told you, I think Ja Rule is going to be involved in, in the mm. Fire Festival too. I think that that's just them knowing yeah. that the internet is going to eat up any type of alleged beef or friction that they have. But I think that Ja Rule, I think he'll be there. I think he'll perform. I think that he'll be a part of it. Yeah. Why not? It's, it's a festival. Everybody have a good time. Well, in other news of every thug needing a, a lady, um, Smokey yeah. Robinson <laughs> revealed he had a year-long affair with Diana Ross. Smokey, listen, we love you, man. And you're yeah, you're a legend. Uh, you're one of the greatest songwriters ever. One of the greatest producers ever in our culture. We didn't need this information. Why not? You're 83 years old. You know the Queen Diana Ross. I mean, you know she probably didn't want people knowing that. I'm sure people around y'all knew that for years. It wasn't a secret to them, and it should have stayed that way. I don't think I should ever have ever known that our legend Smokey Robinson and Diana Ross had an affair. I don't know, man. The way the way Quincy was giving it up. I feel like everyone in Motown was just all fucking each other. Men, women. Oh, for sure. Different. Like, this wasn't shocking to me that Smokey Robinson fucked Diana Ross. It's not shocking. I'm just saying, <laughs> so I don't, we, that, didn't, yeah, I we just didn't need that. We didn't, we didn't need Smokey to say that. Like, you're 83, Smoke. We don't need that information. What are we going to do with that information? I how mean, long big, after, big Q opened the floodgates. You know? How long after you beat can you stop telling people that you beat? If you 83, don't tell me about who you were smashing when you was 22. But what yeah. if he's like wants to be <laughs> no, what if what if he like, beat recently? Nah, <laughs> wait. De- <laughs> definitely don't tell <laughs> me about Bluetooth? what if he's talking about a current yeah. affair. Nah, yeah, no, nah, I'm cool. I don't want to know. No, but for real, how that. long? How long? But so what, you, I mean, I think that if you're both in your 80s, nah, I think that if the, I hit you once, you part of my collection. I think the people mm, that really no. like love. <laughs> I think the people, first of all, <laughs> look if, at Julian Point. Yeah, he has a point. Beast mode. I think if you're 80, <laughs> if you're 83, first of all, most of the people that were like around y'all back then, no longer with us. No longer with us. Um, but granted, I know about Smokey. We <laughs> all know about Smokey. Jesus to bear. <laughs> but I don't think we care about this. We just didn't need that information, Smokey. You got to you gotta come. Sometimes you just got to keep certain shit. Just keep that in Motown. Keep it playing. What if, like, uh, I mean, you can't hear what you never reveal. Like, what mm. if he's trying to just get that off? If Smokey's 83, it's other things that he needs to worry about healing right yeah. now. But what if that Diana shit has just been eating away at him? Mm. At 83? Yeah. Let it continue to eat, man. <laughs> We don't need it. It's just what Smokey was just trying to tell us that he think niggas that drink wine was doing crime. What? Y'all remember that? Yes. No. You smoking weed, <laughs> drinking wine, doing crime. We Smokey niggas that's drinking wine ain't committing no crimes. I can, nah, I can, first of all, Boone's nah. Farm is considered wine. Nah. How do you even know? What, what, you drink that? When I was a kid, yeah. Ugh. You didn't drink Boone's? Well, no. You're better than me. But you drink farms. Um, Y- Rory was a Boone's Farms, Farms black and mild smoking. Like Rory was. Oh, you like trailer trash for real? That's not trailer trash. That's not that's corner store trash. Yeah, yeah, that's but like the, dirty hood nigga. The trailer well, park white. is like yeah, there was no white, trailer yeah. park in sight. Corner store is like the delicatessen for trailer <laughs> parks. Yeah, that's like, like the, the bodega, communal area. Yeah, the bodega is like the is like the trailer park. Wait, y'all didn't drink Boone's Farm when you were no, no, Kids? baby, I was no. a four local kid. Same. I was 21 when you was a four came local out. kid. Yeah, I used yeah. to drink four local back before they took the crack out. I, I mean, saying. yeah, we all yeah. We, that we, explains we so that much. The marriage. What the fuck was you drinking? We used to then? shotgun those. Same. Facts. I was drinking Wild Irish Rose. You was shotgun the Maris 2020. Yeah, we upstate. Oh, oh, this oh, this is what we did. Shotgun, shotgun four locals. Back when I had the. I was drinking Burnett's. Burnett's grape with grape soda. That Burnett shit is disgusting. I snuck my grandmother's E and J into a high oh, school football what? game. Evil Jesus? Evil Jesus. <laughs> it's my guy, Evil Jesus. <laughs> I can't believe y'all think y'all better than me for not drinking Boone's Farm. We ain't saying all that. <laughs> I do. And I think I'm better than people who drink Taylor Port, too. If you drink Taylor Port, Taylor this Port goes to crazy. you. This goes to you. Yes. I don't even know that. How do we get on that topic? Talk. Smokey Robinson. Oh, <laughs> see what he does. See to what Smokey does. But doesn't he just want to add his legacy? Like at this point, he's just like getting some shit off. Like, yeah, by the way, yeah, but I did you this. don't need to get off women that you slept with. That's, That's lame as fuck. That's cool. I mean, I'm not condoning, especially it. when it's the uh, the legendary <laughs> Diana Ross. Like, come on, we didn't need that. What if Smokey feels like he's the prize? Mm. I mean, Smokey. Listen, Smokey was a major, major figure in Motown. Like, I'm not. He, she should feel like a prize, but. <laughs> I just think that it's just at 83, so many years have passed. We didn't need that information. What, what was the context? Of course, I only read the headline. I'm sorry I didn't do my due diligence on this article. Did he just flat out in an interview be like, yo, yeah, I beat. I beat. That's it. Well, I mean, he just. Who, nobody asked him. At that. 83, I still feel sexual. He's talking about currently fucking Diana Ross. Yeah, you, didn't see, you don't remember the album that dropped? No, I just remember him, tell, I just remember him trying Gasms, to tell us that, yeah. that uh, drinking wine was going to make people do crime. We, oh, he responded to rumors that he and fellow Motown icon Diana Ross are the real parents of Michael Jackson. Oh, I heard, I heard that too. 
Not blanket, the other one. Not blanket. But listen, I mean, you're saying I was married at no, the time. We were working together and it just happened. But it was beautiful. No, they're saying they're, they're the parents of Michael Jackson. Oh. Not his kids. Of actual Michael. Well, there, there's some other rumor of one of Michael's kids is real parents is people in Smokey, Motown. Smokey was speaking to the fact that people, that was a rumor back in the day. That people were trying to say that he was Michael's stupid ass rumor. But knowing his album is called Gasms, does it not make sense for him to share sexual exploits? Yeah, like be mad horny. You can Julian, yes, you can share sexual exploits. I'm just saying, when it's somebody like Diana Ross... So it's just about the woman that he of course, put on that's, front street. That's why we're even talking about this. We're not talking about a random woman that he met in fucking Detroit on a cold night in the winter of fucking 69. Very actually, specific. That's actually exactly what he's saying here. I'm talking about <laughs> Diana Ross. She was young Ross. and trying to get her career together. <laughs> I was trying to help her. I brought her to Motown, in fact. They were in I Detroit. wasn't going after her. She wasn't going after me. It just happened. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes Man, it just if you beat more than two years ago, don't bring my fucking name up. Two years? Don't bring my fucking two name up. But, but no, but I'm not even the same person. I don't even question. have the same no, hair on my head. But that's whack, though, because cells. y'all, girl, women do that shit all the time. Big facts. Y'all fucked the dude back then, and. I didn't, bro, I didn't say this is specific women to bring, women or men. You said we used to talk, and we said hi, hi to you. Just, no, but, but women do that though. <laughs> okay, I'm sure they do. It's corny when they do it too. Okay, I'm all, right. saying, all across the board. If we fuck more press. than two years ago, don't go around telling people you fucked me. You don't even know but, me anymore. Okay, I, need you did, I don't even yeah. own them panties anymore. But he fucked you. <laughs> you had them off. Isn't that the point? You left him at his. <laughs> he owns the panties. Yeah. Just don't do it, y'all. Just I'm don't with bring you on up. That, don't bring up. Just shut the fuck up. I think it's corny. And and I'm on the side of don't ask me if I smashed her either. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Don't make me lie. Yeah, because dudes do that a lot. Like, yo, you hit that? I'm like, okay, but then yes. why are you even asking do you? I'm, I'm going to lie. Do you owe the your friend, say your friend wants to pursue someone and you hooked up with her years ago? Oh, that's, no, that's different. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the homies are just asking like, yo, you ever hit that? Don't ask me that, man. You would lie and just say no? I wouldn't, I just say don't ask me that. That's a yes. That's, that's a yes. yes. That's that's nothing. I didn't say yes or no. You would say no if you didn't. No, I wouldn't. It's, yeah, it's, 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 no, it's girl. It's people think that I've had sex with certain girls and I've never answered it. Like who? And I haven't. You want to say, why are you asking me that? No, it's like, why are you asking me that? I don't ask nobody who they have sex with. But you pushing back on the question nobody. makes us believe that you did. That's no, what that's, we're that's, that's, that speaks to your brain, not that's mine. That's literally everyone in the room just said yes when you said that. Yeah, but that speaks to the brain of today. Like, to, like we know that if you're <laughs> trying to be private in today's world, that's looked at as being weird. Like, why are you being weird? No, nigga, certain, some shit is just private. Well, it's, it's not, not privacy to say if I did not have sex with someone and you asked me if I had sex with them and I say no, that's not a privacy thing. I just didn't. No, but why are you asking me that? You well, you could, you could follow anyway. You could say no. Why did you ask me that? No, I'm just saying why are you asking me that? Period. Because I want to pursue her and I want to make sure Maul didn't fuck Oh, no, that, that's, that's different. Like I said, if one of my friends is asking about a girl, like, yo, you know this girl and, 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 and we had something, of course I would expose that. That's like, yo, what we're getting Just at. to let you know. No, I'm talking about sometimes people will ask shit and they don't even know the girl. Mm-hmm. They don't even have no contact with her. No way. To, like, they just want to know. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, you ever smack? Like, why are you asking me that? I used to That's do that. Weird. And then I learned that I wouldn't want nobody asking that about me. So I just I think it's to weird to just want to know what people are doing with and who they're doing with sexually. That's all. I think that's weird. Fair enough. Smokey, specifically. That's very weird. 83 years old, it, it, exposing that type of shit is very weird. But... Mm-hmm. Guess you got an uh, album to push. Uh, well, speaking of Eskimo Brothers, Kevin Durant inks a lifetime deal with Nike. I'm smoking these uh, transitions, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you're Every thug needs a lady to... That's your Eskimo brother? Rory son. Me and KD? Yeah, I think so. You think so? No, you, th- you sound nah, like he you know. know. Nah, he know. know. <laughs> you sound like you <laughs> know. know. That's why you don't wear Nikes. No, nah, look. KD signed a lifetime <laughs> deal with Nike. <laughs> no, I fuck with KD. <laughs> no, but you don't wear Nikes, though. No, I don't wear that girl anymore. No, no, no. You, you don't wear <laughs> no... <laughs> All you have in your closet is Adidas and New Balance. That's it. That's been my wave though. No, I'm but not. I love Nike. Ever since KD got to Nike, that's that's been your way. No, I beat point. second. <laughs> Shout out to KD, man, signing a lifetime deal yeah. with Nike. Um, I think that's uh, amazing. Uh, Going to continue his partnership with them. They've been doing some great shit in the community. Refurbished a lot of basketball courts, a lot of community centers, and things like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So shout out to KD, man. This is this is big. Anytime you're from you know the inner city, like most of these athletes are, you grow you you grow up just hoping to have your own shoe at some point, and uh, you know. The fact that he has now now has a lifetime, lifetime deal with the giant company as Nike is an amazing accomplishment uh, for an amazing athlete, one of the best athletes, one of the best basketball players we've ever seen. You made me take him out of my top five last episode, but it's cool. Uh, Did I? You made me replace uh, Kevin Durant with Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. 
What is wrong with you? I mean, you yeah. Have to. That's right. Oh, I think that's right. I think One of the best basketball players I've ever seen. How can I not have Kevin Durant in that top five? To watch? But to have Kevin Durant and not Tim Duncan is crazy. But I to think, watch I think, play basketball? I think, KD, I think KD will agree with that. Like nah. Tim Duncan? I don't, nah, think, I've seen I don't think KD. I don't Tim, think KD Tim Duncan? Do y'all know what Tim... Y'all could just pull up Tim Duncan's rookie year. Just pull up his accolades his first year in the NBA. That's cool. It looks like Cardi B. He wasn't year. lights out from three, though. So, you know. Lights out. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever tell me somebody's lights out. Is he out. not lights out? <laughs> I don't know about lights out. The lights uh, are still on. Well, yeah. Shout out to uh, Rich. Kevin, I think that's an incredible deal. Yeah, um, super dope deal. Shout out to the entire team over there, man. Knicks, best team in the NBA, clearly. The Knicks tied up the series 1-1. One, one. Yeah, you Knicks Shake, fans just clapping shaky, now, but you got to go to South Beach. With, yeah, they're going to go gonna to Miami. Miami real, looking uh, shook. It's going to gonna get real different down there once, once Jimmy Butler gets back. Um, you saw how he was smiling? used to the cold weather. We'll be fine down there. Listen, mm-hmm. man, I'm happy for the Knicks. Uh, the doors. I'm, I'm happy for the Knicks just being in the second <laughs> round. I got a win last night at the Garden. Shaky win. Tied. Super it, shaky win. Three yeah, more shaky wins in the Eastern Conference Finals. Fuck it. Um, so shout out to the Knicks. Shout out to Julius coming back from that injury. Looking real good last night. Uh, shout out to Jalen Brunson. I just said he had to just be more aggressive Hell in the yeah. fourth quarter. I would just love like a rebound. A rebound? Just just like a rebound. From who? The team. From the Knicks? From the Knicks. I mean, they had it. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, had, they had some they rebounds last night. Up. I mean, key rebounds catching down the stretch. Nope. Yeah, they were catching It's nope four moves. Knicks in the paint, one Miami Heat. and they <laughs> Coming down with nope. offensive rebounds. Adebayo was slapping them across. Yeah, I get it. But I mean, fuck it. They got the win. Shout out to the Knicks. What's crazy is we out rebounded them fifty to thirty four. Didn't didn't appear that didn't way. Didn't feel like that yeah, at that's, all. That's that's not Nick, even a little bit. That's because you know you know what it is. Nick fans know that we need every possession. <laughs> Yo, for real. Because this shit'll get ugly. If they quick. miss a shot, yeah, yeah. please. We gotta capitalize. Yeah. So shout out to the Knicks tying it up. Uh the Josh work. Hart, best I mean to me. Top five player. I might take Tim Duncan and KD out at this point. Hard <laughs> no, I feel you. I feel you. I like the fact that Melo was at the game supporting the Knicks last yeah, night. Yeah, exactly. yeah, shout out. He saw D Wade trying to give the Heat love and couldn't let that happen. He can. Yeah, he couldn't. Yeah, let that and he did it. Yeah, at the Garden. He couldn't let that happen. Nah. So shout out to Melo. Uh, shout out to the uh, the Lakers. They won uh, game one of their series against the Warriors last night. Um, that was a great game. I thought the Warriors were gonna get blown out down in the fourth quarter. They came back. Think AD will ever play like that again? You think Jordan Poole? Listen, play, everybody right? keep asking me, yo, if you're a Laker fan, how come you're not talking about them? I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe in Anthony Davis. I'm just trying to just shut the fuck up and enjoy every game and every win because I don't think AD can continue to play like this because he hasn't continued to play like this in some years now. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he is and we're winning, I'm happy, but I don't want to speak on it because I don't want to fucking talk too soon and get happy and get my hopes up and then yeah, he fucking tears, tears, his, tears his pinky yeah. tomorrow and then can't go until 2025. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but shout out to the Lakers. They got their first game, first win. I was shocked. That's big. Um, I wasn't really shocked though. I felt like the, because the turnaround was Sunday to Tuesday. Warriors just played Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah, I felt like that wasn't, they didn't have enough time off. They probably was still, that was a seven game series they just came out of. Um, and you can kind of tell down the stretch. Steph didn't look to be that aggressive uh, the team wasn't as quick to the rebounds and the loose balls so they, I think they were just tired a little fatigued but either way the Lakers capitalized got their win can I get an apology that you don't mean what I had suggested that the Sixers Celtics series may be just as good as what the Kings and Warriors was no nah, I don't think so James had a great game though did you think that Sixers were going to win that game no game one of nobody, course not nobody thought the Sixers were going to win that and game and I'm saying I think this is going to be a real series <sighs> I mean, listen, first of all, before we even get to that, shout out to Joel Embiid on winning the MVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, very well deserved. It's been, you know, his career started off shaky. He was he was hurt. People at the beginning of his career were saying that Philly should have traded him. Then they started the whole trust the process thing. He sat the first um, two years Long of his ass career. process. Long process. But listen, man, number three seed, they're up 1-0 in the second round of the playoffs. Joel Embiid is now the MVP. Uh, James Harden looking like old Houston James Harden in game one had 45 points. Yeah, he went crazy. Um, that was a great game, though. Great game. I think this series is going to be really good until Joel comes back, and then I think it's going to get really ugly for Boston. But we'll see. I don't know. If James plays like this, though, Philly's in good shape. Yeah. And then uh, the other series that's going on, Denver and Phoenix, speaking of KD, Denver's up 2-0. Listen, man, Chris Paul, listen, man. <laughs> I love Chris Paul, one of my favorite players of all time, one of my you favorite point guards one. of all time. Just just, it's he not has, in the cards, it's man. Not he has the worst. It's just like injured in the playoffs again. Again. And now they're saying he's out for at least two weeks. I thought this was going to be a rebuilding year for the Suns anyways with acquiring KD and fucking getting rid of your entire 
bench. Like, no, rebuilding? Yes. No. I did not think this was going to be the year for the Suns. No. I think not, off season not, is when they're going to make a fucking team around KD. Not, 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 maybe not win a championship, but you're not rebuilding when you make a trade for Kevin Durant. I mean, a trade for Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. You you're talk trying to the Nets. You're trying to go after it right now. Like, you're trying to, no. When you have Booker and Chris Paul, Chris Paul and you're bringing in Kevin Durant, that's not a rebuild. That's a, yo, go get it right now. We've seen that the big three doesn't work that way anymore in the league. It used to. It doesn't work that way. You need a fucking team now. No, the big three doesn't work when you fucking draft play, uh, trade players and try to bring them in and put them together. It usually works when you let them grow together and build together, which is what the Warriors have Warriors. done, which is why they're a dynasty. Mm. You got to let players develop together, let them build the chemistry. You can put three very talented players together. So kind no of, chemistry. Kind of to my point that I didn't think the Suns were really going to do shit this year. I think next year, yeah, I think they'll have a squad. Well, I mean, Denver's the number one team, so, I mean, it's not no surprise that they're up 2-0. That's not a surprise. I think that Chris Paul getting hurt definitely ruins their chances of beating Denver. I don't think they, they, they can get past Denver without Chris Paul's leadership, without his his IQ, without his just professionalism on the court. Mm, without I don't Kim. think that, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that they can, I, they might get swept. I really see, I really see a sweep coming. Without, without Chris Paul, I see a sweep. And that's fucked up, because KD and Devin Booker should be able to beat Denver. But I don't see it happening. That's back to back sweeps for KD, right? Is it? The Nets got swept last year? Yeah. 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 By who? <laughs> Big sweep. Who Celtics? Swept? Celtics. Celtics, right? yeah. In the Eastern Conference? No, that was that the Eastern Conference Finals? No, that was <laughs> no, the first round. That was the first round. Yeah, that was the first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah damn, <laughs> they did get swept. Wow. They're oh, well. not going to get swept. Uh, all right. But back to back sweeps is, that's tough on KD. That's tough. But either way, I got the Warriors still winning it all. Even um, with Jordan Poole? Jordan Poole Jordan Poole where, where am I right Jordan Poole <laughs> I just I just want to listen man let me just kick it to Jordan real quick we can get out of here J- Jordan J- when Poole. you Jordan when you have the greatest shooter ever wearing the same jersey that you you wear and you're down by three <laughs> I'm not the smartest man in the world never played college ball never played no professional never got a check for basketball so I should you, you guarded Ray Rice I guarded Ray Rice he killed me but I guarded him my guess is that you want to find the greatest shooter ever and get the ball in his hands. That's just my guess. I Look understand. At Taylor's face. <laughs> I understand you're wide open, but Jordan Poole, sometimes you're wide open for a reason. Sometimes they play the odds. <laughs> no, seriously. Sometimes and not saying and not saying Jordan Poole can't shoot because he, he probably can. hit two right before that. But when you want to play the odds, they're gonna get the ball out of Steph. The double team is on Steph, get the ball out of his hands. You gotta get to Steph. You gotta dribble. It was 10 seconds when you shot that ball. You got to take some time, oh, get that so ball short. back to Steph Curry right there. You have to. Steph or Clay, at 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 minimum, Steph or uh, Clay. Yeah. I think Pete Carroll called that play. Yeah, but yes, yeah, but Jordan, you just can't. And I get it. You was wide open. It felt good. The ladies is watching. You light skin. Mm-hmm. I get it. He is light skin. I get it. Pool's closed. He's he probably the high spice of the NBA. He know he's probably he wants to be the third splash brother. Both of them are light skin. You know how it goes. He's trying, he trying to fit right in. That's I get privilege. it. Get that ball in number 30 next time, Jordan. Mm. Just, just listen to me. If you don't listen to nothing else, I tell you, get the ball to stuff. So you're saying Draymond could never shoot that because of You saw how fast right? Draymond made the pass. Draymond passed it to Jordan. He didn't even want to touch the ball. But my thing is, it's yeah, it, was so, it was to give Steph some time to get away from the double team. Yeah, fast get the move ball it was back. for Steph to move without the ball. Yeah, get the ball back to Steph. Like it's just, I, I just that's just a bad shot. That's a bad shot. All right. The devil doesn't need an advocate, but all right, he was wide open for a reason. Ugh. But Jordan Poole can shoot. He can. But they would rather live that with was him also taking a bad the shot. shot. I also agreed with Pete Carroll not giving it to to fucking beast mode no, in didn't. the Super Bowl. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you're the only person that agreed with that. That was terrible. They were supposed to run it right there. If you put it in context, no, it wasn't. It was. We it, le- a, it left the slant wide pick. open. Everyone thought it was going to go to Marshawn Lynch. No. Right. And some, you know what? And sometimes <laughs> you have to give it to Marshawn Lynch. Because Even at, when least, everyone knows. <laughs> at least if we lose, we ran the right play. Okay. If, if Butler doesn't intercept that and jump that slant, I think Pete Carroll is deemed the best coach ever for making that call. Because it, it was wide open. Same way Jordan Poole was. It just didn't go in. <laughs> you thought it was wide open. Butler. Malcolm Butler was sitting right there. He was sitting right there. That was a good defensive play. And that's my that's my point. It wasn't a the, bad call. It was a great defensive play. Great defensive play. But that's my point with this Jordan Pool shot. You're family wide open for too. a reason. Fry, you're wide open that's for family. a reason. Um, 
<laughs> shout out to Malcolm. You, Butler, not, I mean, I don't know. The X? Other. X? No, shout out to Malcolm X. Okay. Oh, word. I was just making sure. But I'm talking about Malcolm Butler in particular. Uh, either way, I got the Warriors winning it again this year. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully, this this I wouldn't mind this Lake Warriors series going seven. I just don't think that Anthony Davis is going to going to continue to put up thirty and twenty each night. I just don't think that he's going to do that. Same. So um, I got the Warriors winning this series. I got them winning it all. But uh, either way, make it seven games. Just keep it interesting. Jordan once- Poole was six for eleven from three, though. So in his defense, he was having a good I game. Mean- no, he was having a listen. Wide open. I'm not. Shot, I'm not. But that, not saying it's that a good shot. shot but I'm saying he had a hot hand. I'm not. Shot though, he's wide open. Fans, it's, it's a bad shot. He, he had a hot hand. He was far from. Got to go to Steph. Got to go to number thirty. That's it. We don't got to make this complicated, fellas. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to run the play that they know is coming because it ain't what you do is how you do it. So I never thought we had one more way. thing before we before you do the close. What? Uh, Ed Sheeran has an album coming out <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> No way. Like when people are listening to this, Ed yeah, Sheeran's yeah, yeah, album yeah, exists? Yeah. No yeah. way. It's called Subtract, which is hilarious because he's about to subtract his, his financial, worth. his net worth. Wait, Ed Sheeran has an album coming up called Subtract? I thought, I thought it was called What's Going On. Oh. <laughs> what's Going On would have been great. Like I didn't, I didn't even hear What's Going On. That's what I would have named it. That's what's up. I'm wow. excited. Yep. Okay, Ed. Well, <laughs> I mean, I like Ed's music, so I'm he don't got a let's get it on. He got a life goes on on it, all right. Any feats? Any any feats on there? It's just the gay state. Who's the gay state? Come on, you can't say come on, <laughs> Marvin. Uh, oh, oh I the gay estate. I thought you were talking about a, a, like literally it was a, a bad state joke. that is gay. No, you guys joke, couldn't Julian. understand. I said the gay estate. I thought you said gay state, like the gayest no, of states. No, not Lil I thought you said the gays can stay. Is what the gays can stay? That's what I thought you said. They can, I mean, they can. Yeah, no, they, for they sure. They listen to Ed. They I just didn't Ed. see how you was trying to tie this in with the Ed Sheeran. Oh. Stay with me by Sam Smith. Okay. The also, gays can stay. another redhead. He, he's, he's not. not. Redhead. He's, he's not? Major? No. no. Thought, Thank you, though. I appreciate it. here's Jet no. Black. Oh, but is it? Dark? Oh, he had on like a red, he has on a red uh, dress right there. That's what it was. Okay. That, that's he looks was. like a redhead right there. No, the before and after of Sam One day, Smith. I want. I really want to talk about the fall of Sam Smith. Not right now, because Eden's giving us to wrap it up. But one day, we'll talk about it. I've touched upon it. You. you I knew what? that was coming. Y'all are so whack. Well, he did. You want to touch on Sam Smith? I have not touched Sam Smith. Would you? I, He's I, touched I, you, though. No, he is not. I've, I've actually Father never met Smith. the gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Father O. Smith. Father O. Smith. O. Smith. Father O. Smith. <laughs> Father o. Smith. That's not German Sam. Irish. Not to be mistaken with the songbird. Thanks Sam for Smith. listening to us, guys. Thank yes. you so much. We appreciate it. The Book of Sam. Oh, that's a nasty one too. All right. Well, listen, man. You've been another uh, audio journey, another visual expedition mm-hmm. of a clusterfuck of shit that's just on our minds. Yeah. Um. But either way, we'll be back in a couple of days to speak with y'all to kick it with y'all. Go Knicks. Go Knicks. Okay. Hopefully they go all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. I would love to see that just for the city. Mm. Uh, but if not, it's been a great year for them. Damn, I should have went. Ugh, birthday weekend, F1 weekend in Miami, and the Knicks are going to be. Damn, I should have went to Miami this weekend. It's a lot What's, going on. What time is it? <laughs> you can catch a flight. Still catch a flight. I got I have the drugs for base. Yeah, there you go. You can catch a flight. Uh, either way, be safe this weekend. Have fun. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of days to kick it with y'all. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. Mm.